because I learned something very interesting about Donaldsonville this week. Donaldsonville served as the state capital of Louisiana for one year in 1830, and then New Orleans wrestled that title back, not Baton Rouge. I don't know when Baton Rouge got it. That's for an historian to figure out. But I thought that was really interesting. We're on very historic ground here, and we'll be learning more about this area as our interviews continue. But Ariane, what about that lineup tonight? A great lineup, jam-packed lineup. In fact, we will learn more about the area from local public officials, principals of the schools, and two community organizations that will tell us about one very special event and one very special exhibit later on today. And then, of course, we have replays. If you can't watch us for the entirety of the game, and Christy, what is that schedule? You can catch replays of the game of the week, along with the tailgate show on sorry Friday nights at 10:30, Saturday and Sunday mornings at 9 a.m., and Sunday evenings at 6:30. Plenty of opportunities to catch this game and the rest of the tailgate show. And let's check in now with Jimmy Frederick, who'll give us a preview of tonight's game. Jimmy, I'm taking some notes on what you were telling me about Donaldsonville. What was that again? 18:30. Is that on the test? It's going to be on the test. We've got a great football game tonight, Rusty. We've got two teams that are 6-1. and one. St. James is 1-0 and oh in 10-2A. Donaldsonville 1-1. and one. They won their first district game in five years last week against Riverside. St. James comes in with a, a, a very sophisticated wing T offense. It's going to be important for the defense of Donaldsonville to contain the speed of St. James. Donaldsonville also very fast, and their offense is more of an option type offense so the defense of St. James is going to have to play assignment football and it's going to be a, a track meet I have a feeling so we're looking forward to a great football game. Well you know a lot about football and we'll be looking forward to the play-by-play -play upstairs. We, and please stay tuned for this game because it's going to be great. Thank you very much Jimmy. And now let's check in with Ariane for an update on our football food and families program. Ariane? Thanks Rusty. If you've been watching the show all season you know that every week we update you on the status of our football food and families campaign. This initiative was started last year with the goal of 30 thousand pounds of food collected. We've upped the ante. This year we're trying to collect 50,000 pounds of food. We are over the 15,000 pound mark thanks to the help of students like Bianca and Alicia. And I want to start with Alicia. Tell us why you think students like you should be involved in initiatives like this. Because you're giving back to the community and it's very important to help others. Good. Well, did you do anything exciting or creative to help raise awareness about this campaign? Yes, we put up signs, announcements, posters, and we had can barrels around our school. Okay, well, if you were doing this campaign again next year and you could do it any differently, maybe more creative, enthusiastic, and fun, what would you do? We'll have a fun day at our school to help promote the community and get everyone involved. That's a good idea. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, let's go over to Bianca, who is a very familiar face. Bianca is one of the stars of our local football food and families commercial. How do you feel about that? Uh, it was very really exciting, you know, to be on TV and support my team, my school. Good. Well, you guys collected food as well. Anything interesting or exciting that you did? We put up posters, we made announcements, and some of our teachers even said that if we brought canned goods that we get free homework passes. Woo. Now that homework passes. <laughs> that, I like that. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Your school collected 680 pounds of food this week along with your 120. Thanks for the effort to help us kick hunger and we're going to kick it back over to Rusty with a very special guest. Well, two very special guests. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us again with the live Cox 4 Game of the Week tailgate show. Only on cable, only on Cox 4. We're joined here with the new principal of St. James, Harry Francois. How are you doing today? I'm fine. Good. Well, congratulations on the new position. Thank you very much. <laughs> now, how long have you been principal at St. James? Well, this is my first year as principal. However, this is my third year at St. James. I was assistant principal two years ago for two years. Okay. Okay, so it's like coming back home. It's just like coming back home. Now, what excited you about coming back home to St. James and, and the things that awaited you? The sense of community. Uh, at St. James, many of the students graduate, go on to college, and then come back and uh, become teachers at the high school so that we have very close ties with the community in that sense. Well, great. That's always a great thing for a community to have people not only go away, learn what they, they can learn, and come back and bring it to the community. That makes a stronger community all the time. Yes, it is. It's very great. So are there any challenges or opportunities that await you on the horizon over the next few semesters, years? Well, we have some great opportunities. We have, uh, we have our, our magnet school that is a science and math magnet school, and we're in partnership with uh, LSU uh, School of Engineering, so that will allow some of our students to uh, get scholarships at LSU. Wow. Well, it sounds like you're doing a great job. I know you do many more things to come, and thank you for coming to join us on the show. Thank you.
All right, now we're going to kick it back over to Rusty with a very special guest. Thank you, Ariane, very much. I have Dale Email, the parish president of St. James Parish. We've learned a lot about Ascension and Donaldsonville. There's a rich history in St. James as well. And Mr. President, thank you for joining us tonight. I appreciate that you go to the same barber that I do. That's right, Rusty. We sure do. <laughs> if the trouble's not with your set. It's just the blinding light or two. Yeah. Uh, tell us about your rich history that's coming up 200 years next year. Exactly right. Uh, in St. James Parish, we plan on having a bicentennial. Uh, next March 31st, 2007, St. James Parish will be 200 years old. Uh, St. James is one of the original 19 parishes from the Orleans Territory, so uh, we look forward to having a big celebration on March 31st. Now you have some big announcements that have just occurred, and economic development. Tell us about that. Yes, uh, I guess post-Katrina, a lot of activity has been taking place in St. James Parish, both from a residential standpoint and also now business and industry. So we have quite a number of industries looking at locating in the St. James Parish. And we had one recently, uh, Louisiana Pipe and Steel Fabricators, announced locating the Comet area on East Bank. Uh, spent some $80 million worth of investment, about 500 jobs. That is tremendous. And you have others in the works. Well, certainly. Hopefully, there's just one of many more to come. Uh, I know we have another one in the works trying to get all the permitting, going through the permitting process, an ethanol plant. So we look forward to working with them. And we have about five or uh, six others, and hopefully we uh, can land two or three of them. And it's not all about work, it's about fun too. Oh, exactly right. I mean, we, as Cajuns, you know, we play hard. I mean, I work hard, but we also can play hard. So we're also not only planning this bicentennial celebration next year, but we have a Veterans uh, Day program that we're having on November 9th to honor all our veterans. We're going to uh, have that at the uh, foot of the Veteran Memorial Bridge at our Welcome Center. So that's on November 9th. We're asking the public to come on out uh, that afternoon. And also, you know, every year in December, we have the Festival of the Bonfires and the lighting of the Christmas Bonfires on 11. Well, you need to get down to St. James Parish and come have a good time and see the changes that are developing in that parish. And we'll be back, and thank you very much for joining us, and uh, we'll see you again next year. Thank you. thank you so much, and join us for more live Cox 4 Game of the Week tailgate show in just a few moments. Welcome back. We are live with the Cox 4 Game of the Week tailgate show, only on cable, only on Cox 4. Joining us now for the Scholar of the Week program is David Searles, owner of Crown Trophy. And David, would you do the honors of introducing these scholars? Thank you, Rusty. On behalf of Wendy's and Crown Trophy, it's my pleasure to introduce this week's Cox 4 Scholars of the Week from St. James High School. Alicia Bailey, congratulations, Alicia. From Donaldsonville High School, Bianca Sutherland, congratulations, Bianca. And Bianca, you're going to choose Southeastern for college, and Alicia is choosing Tulane. And so we appreciate you choosing Louisiana for college. We need you to stay here for a long time, okay? And congratulations on your good scholarly work. Thank you. All right, well, let's go check in with Big Al and see what Big Al has cooking. Christy? Thanks, Russ. Thank you. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Cox 4 Game of the Week. I am Jimmy Frederick, along with color analyst Randy Leindecker. Of course, we have Ron McDaniel in the booth as well, and Tressy Leindecker will be on a lovely field tonight, bringing us all the updates from both sidelines as this game unfolds. The colors are being presented. We are going to listen to the national anthem as the colors are presented on this gorgeous football field on a gorgeous Friday night. Junior ROTC doing the honors. It's St. James versus Donaldsonville. So glad you've joined us.
a lovely rendition of the national anthem played by the Donaldsonville Tiger Band. And now we are ready for the start of this football game. Let me bring on color analyst Randy Leindecker. Randy, welcome to the show. And let's take a look at Coach's Keys. First and foremost, what is it going to take for St. James to win this football game as they enter 6-1, and 1-0 in the district? All right, guys, uh, St. James is going to have to dominate the time of possession. They don't want to give Donaldsonville too many chances to put this explosive offense on the field. Donaldsonville is capable of scoring on any play in any given drive. They also want to dominate the clock, uh, and this will keep this uh, Donaldsonville offense on the sideline. They want to score a lot of points, but they also want to use the clock in doing so. All right, let's take a look at Donaldsonville now. They're also 6-1, and one, but they're 1-1 one and one in district play. It's going to be a big task for them to beat this uh, St. James squad. What's it going to take? They're going to have to try to contain this Wildcat speed. This St. James team is full of speed. they got team speed on offense, team speed on defense. they got speed all over the football field. Donaldson is really going to have to contain them, keep them inside, and try to make it a punch-in-the-mouth punch type of football game. And also, they're going to have to dominate the line of scrimmage. St. James, you know, when they line up on defense, you're not sure what you're going to see. It's going to look like a five-man front, a six-man front. They're going to have to dominate the line of scrimmage with their responsibilities on knowing what zone they block and not exactly what man. This is going to be a fun football game. We're going to go to Tressie in just a minute. We'll have starting lineups in just a second as well. And uh, it looks like Donaldsonville is going to be receiving the football to start this game off. Dean Werner is out on the field. They've got some injuries due Donaldsonville. Dean Warner is banged up. He's their senior quarterback. He's been starting since he was a sophomore. Some other major injuries, the fullback, John Jones, number 11. He has a torn MCL. And the outside linebacker, number seven, Robert Thomas, who's a big, big factor on the defense for Donaldsonville, uh, also has a strained MCL, so he will not be in the game. It's The question is, how long will Dean Warner be able to go at quarterback? And... Um, it's just a touch and go. It was a game time decision. We didn't even know if he was going to be starting tonight. Yeah, we're not even quite sure if he's going to show tonight, start or not. But the Donaldsonville team is banged up all over the place. And, you know, it's a shame because this is a big time rivalry. These schools are 15 miles apart. They both 6 and 1. The house is packed tonight. You wish that both teams had their be best players on the field so we could see the best game possible. But this Donaldsonville team believes that they can win this football game tonight. That's the difference in this Donaldsonville team and the Donaldsonville teams of the past. They have, they have gone through the tough years of losing. Now they're beginning to turn the corner. In fact, last week's victory over Riverside, their very first 10 to a district victory in five years, a first district win in five years. Coach Atkins, who's in his third year here at Donaldsonville, said it was the most gratifying victory that he has ever been a part of. And he was at White Castle with some big victories there. So uh, it, that means a lot. They were down 14, 15 to 14 with nine minutes and 33 seconds remaining in the game, ended up winning 40 to 15. That's quite a turnaround. That's a, putting together 48 full minutes of football. Here we go. We're ready for the kickoff. St. James will do the honors. It will be Jarrell Narcisse and set to receive Roy Sam and also Randall Rome. I believe, no, Champlain Babin back there. And it heads toward Roy Sam at the five-yard line. Both of these teams capable of busting one long. As he turns the corner, you see the speed there, but a nice job for number five to shut him down. We'll have the first play. Let's go to Tressy Leindecker now. Well, thank you so much, guys. The field down here is absolutely gorgeous. As you know, it's been raining all week, and you can see where the water actually uh, went on the field, and it's about 10 yards off of the line. It's really, really a beautiful field. It dried very good last night. Coach Atkins said they walked around. It was a little sloshy, but they were able to paint it, and it was really good. It's beautiful weather. The stadium is packed. Tonight, we will be rocking the booty. That's the Floyd Boutte Memorial Stadium, guys. Thanks a lot, Tressie. We were wondering how long it was going to take for you to say that. The first play from scrimmage for Donaldsonville, and it is Dean Warner under center. No check that. It's Roy Sam under center. Gets out of trouble. He's got some running room, carrying it like a loaf of, loaf of bread, but he gets across the 20-yard line, and he picks up four yards. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for Donaldsonville on offense. This is how they crank things up. And uh, we will also look at some interesting plays. That time I, I saw uh, Roy Sam coming out. He's got to tuck that ball a little bit if he's going to not knock it away from him because that thing. Uh, yeah, not a big guy there. So he's going to have his uh, work cut out getting around those ends of St. James tonight. Here we go. Brings up second down. Handing off to Champlain Babin. Babin is the speed demon on this team. And he loses about three yards. Now let's take a look at the starting lineup for Donaldsonville. 
This is how they will start it off. Left tackle Hill. The freshman, Dwight Wright. Maurice Brown, the only returning starter on the line. Bro, Cock, and you see Dean Warner. He was actually a game time decision. He is not going to be starting. It is, D is uh, Roy Sam, Randall Rome, Sam's his quarterback, Fabin Smith, and Aki Turner, also a freshman. There you're starting lineup for the Donaldsonville Tigers. Six and one on the year. Again, it's going to be Roy Sam being tackled, and he loses another 10 yards all the way back to the five, and that's huge. It brings up fourth down. There you see Randy the speed. Let's take quickly a look at the defense, if we can get that quickly, for uh, St. James. There you go, Landry, Casey Narcisse, Darian Moore, Eddie Narcisse, Cousins, Jared Favorite, Narcisse, also another cousin, Thomas Dumas, Byers, and Durancelet, and Dumas are your two cornerbacks. To punt it away will be David Hampton. He's only punted 10 times this season. He averages 38 yards a punt, and this one's almost blocked, and this one will not be 38 yards. It will take a St. James bounce, and Luther Ambrose will back away from it as they blow the whistle, and that is where they will take over. First and 10 will the St. James Wildcats. Let's take a look at the offense now, starting lineup for St. James. This is how they will line up on the offensive side of the football. Rodriguez, the left tackle. Esther, the left guard. Thomas Clark, Casey Narcisse going both ways. Antonio Phillips started since he was a sophomore. You've got Darrell Narcisse, Ambrose Davis, Durant Salette, and Jordan Landry, big tight end to start things off. A very short field here for the very potent offense that is the St. James Wildcats. Go into the air, Luther Ambrose all by himself at the six yard line, touchdown. That's how you start things off very quickly. We won't even get a chance to talk about the defense. And they don't throw the ball much, but when they have, they have been very effective, Randy. Yeah, when you run the ball as well as they do, and, and Donaldsonville's got everybody up in the box, when you run it and you can average four and five yards a pop, you gotta take chances, and that's what Donaldsonville did right there. We'll see on a sprint out pass, the play action, and he's just, he's wide open. You know, he had a little pump fake right there, and Ambrose is wide open. I mean, he turns around and walks in the end zone. That's a perfect throw. You don't want to overthrow him. When he's that wide open, you want to throw him and let him just catch the ball and turn around and walk in. Right. This kick is up by Jarrell Narcisse, and we have a 7-0 ball game with 9.44 left to go in this first quarter. We will be back after this. You are watching the Cox 4 game of the week. St. James taking the early lead. Welcome back, everybody. Getting ready to kick this one away. St. James will do the honors once again, and it will be Jarrell Narcisse. Roy Sam and Champlain Babin once again. This is a... a Rematch of what we saw just a second ago. This one's going to be a little bit shorter kick. Be taken at the 15-yard line by the up back. Slammed down at the 27-yard line. Well, it didn't take long. No, and, and, that, and that's what St. James has done throughout the season. You know, we talked to Coach Galey, and, and his offense is averaging less points than they averaged last year, but the defense is so much better. The offense just hadn't had a whole lot of ground to cover because they get the feeling great you know in such great field position and and it, you know the drives are shorter drives than longer drives and uh Donaldsonville got to step up or it's going to be a long night well so far the line of scrimmage has not been dominated by the Donaldsonville Tigers they've been able to get through pretty quickly and there's a nice pitch well it wasn't a nice pitch it goes off the hands of Dean Warner who lined up actually at the wing back and he is pounded at the two yard line the pitch from Roy Sam goes off his shoulder pads and they lose 25 yards. Yeah, 20, 25 yards. That's Jared Favor right, right? On yeah, that play? yeah, sure was. You see, and, and you know, it's a bad pitch, but Roy's normally the tailback and, and I'm sure they worked on it all week. But that's one of the hard things to do as a backup quarterback, especially in this triple option offense, is to make the read and also make the pitch when you're not used to doing it. And he makes a bad pitch and they get the ball back and, and now it's just it's going to turn into field position see if they can get better field position fuck this ball and play a little defense favorite has now 30 solo tackles on the year a flag will fly that'll give us our first opportunity to talk about this officiating crew referee james kellis will be the official that we will see sometime tonight reed ardwin is the umpire the line judge is barry richard ball start on the offense, half the distance to the goal, repeat second down. There's Mr. Kellis, so they'll lose another yard or two on the, the penalty. Just to finish that out, the uh, head lineman is Mike Rawhouse, and the back judge is Kerry Chesson. 849, as you see there on the scoreboard. 
brought to you by RSC Equipment Rental. Roy Sam, man, the speed of this defense is just unbelievable. And we have ourselves, thought it was a safety, but he just barely got out. And they will have the ball at the literal one foot line. Yeah, and it, like you said, the speed of this defense, I mean, that's just white shirts running all over the place. And I just found it interesting. We'll take a look at the replay. And are they trying to run the option again? There's your fake right there. We talked about it throughout the weeks. And he's got a few choices. And, and so he's either got the dive back to quarterback or the pitch. Uh, but there's just so many white shirts around the football. I'm not sure what reads the correct read at this point. Thank goodness for forward progress, because I yeah. thought that was a safety. I did, too. He barely got out of that. Under center again, Roy Sam stepped back to throw the football. There you see the defensive end, that's Landry. This one's up for grabs, and it is intercepted by number 14, Terry Dumas. And they will turn the ball over for the first time tonight on the interception. The ball just came out like a lame duck, and if we had had a shotgun, we might have shot it. Uh, not a bad, bad decision, though. I mean, what Coach Axel right, thinking right point. there? We'll take a look at the replay. And, and if it wouldn't be for Roy's athletic ability, we would have had another sack right here. Landry, Jordan Landry, defensive end, got an offer already from Northwestern State. Uh, but getting back to the throw, that's just as good as a punt, if not, not better. better. You're not sure yeah. if your punter can kick it that far. So you throw it deep, hope for an interference, hope for your guy to go get the ball, or they intercept it and you tackle it. Well, the one thing that uh, they have not done, St. James, is run up a lot of yards as we see Luther Ambrose running off the left side. Uh, is run a lot, there are a lot, they have 60 or 70 less yards per game this year than they do last year, but it is because of this right here. The defense has given them such a short field. Yeah, I mean, we've seen two drives, and I believe both drives have been around from the 30-yard line and in. I mean, you're only working with 30 yards instead of maybe 80 yards or 70 yards. Yeah, your offense is not going to pile right. up a bunch of yards, but they're scoring a lot of points in this 6-1. and one. The only game they lost, uh, they had five turnovers in that yeah. football game. The desperate so, hand. If they don't beat themselves, they, they're a pretty good football team. We'll take a look at the starting defense right after this. This is a play action. Excuse me, a handoff up the middle. They, they do. They fake the ball very well, does Antonio Phillips, and they will get the first down. Let's take a look at the defensive starters for Donaldsonville while they move the chains. There you see in the defensive end, Randall Rome. Rusty Patterson and Hampton, your two defensive tackles. Dwight Wright, the freshman, is at the defensive end. Aki Turner, the other, other freshman. Samson Duplessis, a linebacker. Hiram first show. The other linebacker, you've got your two safeties, Odom and Babin. The cornerbacks, Harris and Joshua. Handoff, off tackle, it's Ambrose. Ambrose to the eight-yard line, make it the seven-yard line before being upended. He's very close to another first down. Right up the middle, Randy, just nobody can stop him right now. Just watching this Delaware wing T. I I mean, Coach Gailey, I mean, he knows a lot about this scheme. They've been running for a long time. There's plays where we're going to call up here. We're not sure where the ball <laughs> is, and they're running quick traps. But this team is well-schooled. They're well-coached, and they run a lot of formations. You know, they run the wing T offense, but right there, the light, all they've been running so far is an overload. You know, they've got all the guys on one side of the football field, and then they run it back to the weak side. Up the middle once again. A good defensive play that time. As they drop him for a loss on first and goal, brings up second and goal. I believe that was Dwight Wright, I believe. I believe that one of them freshmen he's got yes, out there. got two freshmen starting. I believe that was one of them. Brings up second and goal from the 10-yard line. Again, knocking on the door or scratching at the door, depending on how you want to look at it as a wildcat. See, they got them overloaded again. All the guys are to the right, and here they come that way. Oh, but they were stuffed at the line of scrimmage. Number 64 making the stop. That's Dwight Wright once again, the freshman in on the stop. If you're going to overload, that right side might give them a little trouble. Brings up third and goal. Yeah, they're just going to really try to confuse Donisville's defense by showing them all these different formations. You know, when you get different types of overloads and you get different type of what we would call an unbalanced, your defense has really got to recognize that, and they got to shift to that formation. If you don't shift, they got more people over there than you have, and it's very easy to block you. So you, everyone on defense has got to recognize that formation when they break the huddle. Flag will fly the second time tonight. This should be the first one against St. James, and you saw Antonio Phillips look like he was going to take it himself around the right side, and that is the initial indication. James Kellis makes the call, backs him up five yards. So it's going to bring up third Stand down ball, and goal. Start, on the offense, five-yard penalty, repeat third down. 
So they started out third and goal from the uh, or first and goal from the seven. Now they're back to the 15 yard line. Third and goal from the 15. Coming in motion is going to be play action. Throwing the ball and no, he tucks it under luckily as he was about to get hit. Number 45 coming off the end. And that was actually Hiram for show the safety coming up and making the stop. And Dallasville sending that strong safety right there for show, making and guessing right. You know, St. James has been running a lot to the right, and they're sending that, that linebacker coming this way, and they make a good play. And, and now we got a fourth and long situation. We'll depend on if we get a field goal or a punt. Third year coach, Gary Atkins, six and one this season, one and one in District 10 2A, doing a very good job. He's got this community excited about Donaldson High football again. This is going to be a field goal attempt now. Jarrell Narcisse will put his foot into it from 37 yards. It's up. It's got distance. Is it through the uprights? No, sir. It's a little bit to the left. God, that's a big stop for this Donaldson yes, sir. football well. team. You know, they gave St. James great field position two times. They only give up one score. And, and St. James is a program that's been to the Dome. They've been to the quarterfinals. You know, they've been to the Dome nine times. I think they've been to the quarterfinals. 10 times out of the last 14 years. Anyway, they know how to win big football games, and, and Donaldsonville is learning that. Right. And, and that, that's, that's, that's part of getting this program rolling in the right direction, and a big stop like that may give them a little confidence. Brings up first and 10. You see the coaching staff over there for St. James. This is going to be the pitch again behind Champlain Babin, and Babin is just mauled by the Wildcats. I mean, just pick a couple of guys, and they were in there. You got Eddie Narcisse, you got Darian Moore, Darrell Narcisse, Jonas Thomas, pick one. I'll tell you what, Narcisse, 52, 5'9", 270 pound junior, as a defensive tackle, has 50 tackles and three sacks. I mean, that, that's, that's really not heard of a whole lot from them down linemen. You know, the down linemen don't get a whole lot of credit, don't get a whole lot of plays, but this guy is a tough block. He makes plays all night long, and Bro on the other side, I believe he's 270 pounds, Bro's 170 pounds. That's right. going to be a tough matchup for him tonight. That was one of the things that Coach Atkins said to watch for. Watch that left side, the right guard against uh, Narcisse, and Dean Werner is in the game, but the handoff goes to Corey Odom, and Odom will get to the 20-yard line. He was hit pretty hard in the middle by uh, Jared Favorite. He's got 31 tackles now on the year, two tonight. Here's the peak performance instant replay. Yeah, and they're just running what we call a G right here. You see the guard pulling and trying to kick out that end. Doesn't do a real good job of it. And uh, they're getting up in there, but they're getting positive yards. They put themselves in a manageable situation. You know, they don't throw the football a whole lot. Even on these third and long situations, you may see them still run the football. They believe they can get 9, 10 yards when they run the football. Yeah, just don't make those mistakes against a defense like this, and you, you'll, you'll get some field position here. Pulling it back and a hard hit on Champlain Babin. That was number 24 coming up, Jared Byers. Byers likes to hit like Ronnie Lott, man. He just came in and pounded him. Brings up fourth down. I tell you what, I see a lot of guys out there hitting like Ronnie Lott yeah. in white shirts right now. I mean, they are really flying around to the football, and when they get there, I mean, they really lay in the lumber when they get there. So they'll punt it away, and this will be uh, David Hampton once again. This is the third punt of the night. Oh, excuse me, the second punt of the night. This one is a pretty good one. He gets a boomer off. Dropping Ambrose all the way back to the 35-yard line, and he slips. So St. James will take over. Their worst field position of the night will be the 37-yard line of their own 37. Let's take a look at Monday nights on Cox 4. You certainly don't want to miss the primetime lineup. It be you can begin your week with lively sports chat on Sports Monday with Lee Feinswag live at 6.30. Get the scoop from LSU at 7.30 with LSU Sports Journal. Learn from the legends of Baton Rouge business on Portraits of Success at 8.30. Catch the Coach Pete Richardson show at 9 and inside LSU at 9.30. Remember, the best local programming is only on cable. It's only on Cox 4. Well, guys, we got a, we got a packed house tonight. Like you said, I'm looking across the field. St. St. Jane brought some people standing along the fence That's all the way around. miles away. Yeah. No, this is a rivalry game. They're not going to miss this. A lot of people. Here's the handoff up the middle. It's going to be to uh, number 10. We had a fumble, Jim. Fumble. I look down for a second, and this could be a turning a point of the ball game as uh, Donaldsonville picks up the first fumble of the night. Each team now has a turnover, and that could be a big one. That could be a big one. That could be a confidence builder right there for this Donaldsonville team. Let's see. I'm going to take a guess, and I'm going to guess Coach Atkins is going to try to get a big a quick score right here. He's going to try. 
something tricky, something long. Uh, we'll take a look at the replay. We got Narcisse, the middle linebacker, taking the handoff up in there, running hard, but then Donisonville, that's that he Good. just gets his hand. He's tackling them and he's tackling the football at the same time. Back to the game as they couldn't even make the pitch as uh, Roy Sam was about to do so, and he was just smothered by um, number 58, Darian Moore, the junior defensive tackle. Now, I'm going to tell you what, Jordan Landry, number 45, 6, 3, 200 pounds. I don't think I would run left anymore. 45. <laughs> every play that they ran left, I mean, 45 is, is, is getting plays in the backfield. He's hitting people. I mean, I may try the other side right now. They're going to have a hard time rolling out making a play tonight. They're going to have to be really careful with that ball, as we saw down here in the end zone two series ago. Champlain Babin coming on, and it hands off to the dive back. I believe that was Corey Odom. And again, Jordan Landry making that stop, just like you called, 124 left to go in the first quarter. Yeah, this, this is going to be interesting with the backup quarterback. You know, I'm not quite, I'm sure he doesn't have as much experience as Warner with making the reads like we're talking, because this is the triple option offense, and he's got to make reads. You know, when they break the huddle, they're not sure which ball carrier is carrying the football. So there's a lot of things this quarterback's got to do. He does have a little experience there. He actually throws the ball a little better than yes. Warner. So, you know, it's third and long. Let's see if he can, they can get a completed pass. Three receivers rolling to the right side. Roy Sam trying to make something happen, being chased by the speedy off the defensive line. Again, Darian Moore chasing down the tailback quarter slash quarterback from behind, making the tackle, bringing up fourth down. I like the play call. You know, you put him in trips and you sprint that way and you give uh, Roy Sam the option to run or throw the football. But, I mean, just the white shirts are just coming from everywhere right now. I just don't remember seeing a defense this fast. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they by far the fastest defense we've seen this year. And, and like that defense they just ran, I, I, they had one linebacker, right. and they had about eight guys on the line of scrimmage. It's just you got to be well-schooled in your responsibility when you're playing a triple option football team to have all them guys on the line of scrimmage. Well, they're going to punt it away. This one's going to be a low snap, but a, gets off a nice spiraling punt. Luther Ambrose will let it drop, and it will roll into the end zone for a touchback. And, uh, I mean, if you can say the 20-yard line is, is bad field position, this is pretty bad field position for St. James with 4.6 seconds on the clock left in this first quarter. So we'll have one play, and then we'll have the rules of the game. Brought to you by the East Baton Rouge Parish Officials Association. Don't forget, if you um, would like to get out there and have fun and become an official, they're always looking for good, good folks to be officials. Give them a call. 4.6 will be the last play of the first quarter. First and 10 from the 20-yard line, the worst field position of the night for St. James. Antonio Phillips handing off to the tailback. That was number five, Gary Davis. And Champlain Babin coming up to undercut him. And that does it for the first quarter. It's time for the rules of the game. Right here. There you go. Give him a call. Francis Ferret being official. They always looking for good folks, and it's a tough job, but uh, it's fun Friday nights. These guys do work hard. They certainly do. Don't get a lot of credit and don't get a lot of uh, accolades, I guess is the word I'm looking for. Brings up second quarter, the second quarter, actually. How fast was that first quarter? Yeah. Um, a little about 13 minutes, maybe. <laughs> I mean, that was very quick, and, you know, we, yeah. we expected that. Both teams run the football, but, wow, that one flew by. It's 7-0 to zero, St. James. Here's the quick pitch. Corey Odom is undercut, just slicing through there as Champlain Babin. And uh, they will pick up four yards on that carry. I tell you what, Babin, Babin does a good job of flashing up there, too. He looks like they look like they're going to get a big gain out of anywhere, and he just flies up there and uh, makes tackles. Now, the thing that you need to look for in this situation, you'll see Babin coming up right here. The thing you need to look for, Jimmy, when you get a safety jumping up like that is that play action. Yeah. That play action. They'll fake the ball to you. He'll be flying up, and they'll throw it over the top and take it to the house. I'm sure their coaching staff talking about that right now. Brings up third and inches. Big offensive line ready to hunker down. Average about 235 across the front, and this is Luther Ambrose, and he's going to be close. It depends on the spot here. He was cut down. That was actually Odom, and they're going to give him the first down. It wasn't by much, though. Yeah, and we, and we talked about this one of our keys of the game was just kind of control the clock. And, you know, they do a good job of running the football. They do a good job of running this Delaware wing tee. Just kind of march on down the field and keep uh, – the Donisonville offense off of the field. But really, at this point, I'm not so sure if it's a bad idea 
for St. James' defense to be on the field. It gives their offense a better chance to score because they've been really manhandling Donisville up front and really stopping them. Here comes the play. It's going to be Gary Davis. Davis, the left halfback, spinning wow. for a big gain, still on his feet, crossing the 50-yard line. Picks up 17 yards to the 48-yard line on that play. That was Gary Davis. By the way, I've been calling the wrong name. It's Jared Byers that's actually been running for the St. James well, offense. Take, take a look at this play. You see both guards pulling 54 and 53. What this is, this is the old buck sweep. This is one of the best plays in football. It's been around forever. It gives defensive coordinators fits. Then two guys pull, one of them's kicking out, one of them's leading through. It's the old Delaware buck sweep. It is tough, tough to defend, because once you start flying out to the edge, they're going to run that quick trap up underneath. Well, here's the quick trap right here. And just lumbering is Luther Ambrose. A flag will fly as he pulls three Tigers to the 35-yard line. I'll tell you something I noticed right there real quick. Downfield blocking, Randy. I noticed it on the, on the buck sweep also. The yeah. last two plays, they got a lot of white shirts 10 to 15 yards downfield. And that's what that's when you make big touchdown runs is when them white shirts are blocking corners and safeties. Yeah, both plays, he had two people in front of him. James Kellis is going to make the call. It will go against Deville. Holding on the offense. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay, first down. Check that. St. James is what I meant to say. 10-26 left to go in the second quarter, so it backs him all the way up past the 50-yard line and to the 49. It'll be first and 12. So the big gain negated by Ambrose. Here's the handoff once again. That buck sweep like you called. It's Gary Davis picking up about eight of the 12 yards he needed. And it's been very effective around that right side. And I'm going to tell you, when the buck sweep becomes this effective, when you're getting seven, eight yards a pop, it's going to be a long night because they're going to try to adjust to that, and then St. James is going to hit them up under there with some quick traps. They hit them with that, what they call a backside G. But that, everything in this Delaware wing tee kind of comes off of that buck sweep. The buck sweep, you got to get that established first. Once you get that established, everything else kind of becomes. Tell you, Davis, Davis is fun to watch, too. Here we go, the handoff on the dive to Ambrose. That time it's sniffed down by the defense. Uh, Patterson, number 55, makes the initial contact along with number nine, Sampson Duplessis, a great name for a linebacker, Sampson. Loses a yard, brings up third down and four. All right, we got a big play right here. I mean, I would think St. James would go for it on the fourth down, but anyway, this would be another big stop. I mean, the team's only down seven nothing. Donaldsonville's only down seven nothing. They need a defensive stop. The only stop they got so far was off a missed field goal. They need a defensive stop with a punt. <laughs> Brings up third down. Here we go. Again, coming in motion, and it's going to be on the counter dive. It's stopped by the defense. They hand it off to Davis, and Davis goes nowhere. In on that stop is Aki Turner and also Patterson and Hampton. This is going to be an interesting call right here, guys. We got, you know, it's fourth and less than five. Let's, first of all, we need to watch snap count. Uh, make sure they don't go foot on two and try to get Donisville to, to like jump off sides. It does look like you're going to punt the football. If they do punt the football, this is a big confident builder for Donisville. Yeah, but it's, it's, I'm not sure if they're going to punt the football. Yeah. Special teams, we said, was going to be key. The punter is Terry Dumas, and he will punt this one away. And it's a high kick. It's not exactly as far as he wanted it to be. And it will take a St. James bounce and die at the 19-yard line. So, big stop for the defense. Confidence builder right there for the black shirts. Of course, Donaldsonville is in uh, their black trimmed in red and white and St. James in their white jerseys and their black pants. Donaldsonville needs to establish a few first downs just to give this defense a rest right now. Yeah. That Donaldsonville yeah. defense has been out there the whole first quarter. I was thinking quarter. out on that last series. So uh, they're going to have yeah. to change things up right here. Running outside is not doing it. I think they're going to have to try to keep the ball inside where the speed, they neglect St. James' speed. If you try to run outside, they're just going to run you down. You need to run right at them and try to use some of your strength against their strength. Two receivers to the near side, and it's a handoff to Werner. Werner, Dean Werner, who did not start at quarterback, but it looks like he's running pretty well, is hit at the 20-yard line, picks up a yard, and we go to Tressie Leindecker. Tressie? Well, thank you so much. I'm down here. I found some young ladies roaming around the sidelines, but are here for a very good cause. Go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us why you're here tonight. My name is Erica Rapp. I'm Tamiko Stroud, and I'm Mark Ursley. 
We're from Bayou Lapouche Area Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. And we're here promoting breast cancer awareness. We've handed out paraphernalia, pins, um, different shower items that you put on the shower to remind you to do the three things, your self-check, your doctor get visit, and also the mammograms. Um, my mother died of breast cancer about three months ago, so three years ago, I'm sorry, so I'm a real promoter of breast cancer. And Delta Sigma Theta is here to do that. Well, thank you so much. We appreciate it. And where did you get your paraphernalia that you were passing out tonight? Well, we got a lot of our information from the Women's Hospital, uh, Mary Bird, Perkins Hospital, and uh, American Cancer Society. And there's one more, the Hematology and Oncology Clinic in Our Lady of the Lake Medical Plaza 1. They provided us with the headbands that everybody's wearing today, so we appreciate you. Thank you very much. Well, great job, ladies. I know it's for a good cause. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, guys. Thank you, Tressie. Third down. Receivers split way out, and there's a sharp pass to Champlain Babbitt. It's a big, big run up the middle, still on his feet. Look at the speed, and he is finally brought down at the 35-yard line. He was chased down from behind by number nine, Demel Dumas, and that is what you were talking about, the big first down and a quick hitter on the inside slant. And that's almost what you have to do against a team that's playing cover two with the two safeties. He's got to hit. This is a timing route. There's a quick slant. There's a safety right there, which he just breaks. You know, he makes him miss. But when you got two safeties playing in the middle of football field, you got two corners playing a lot of scrimmage. The soft spot is the soft spot is that quick slant. And if you can time that quick slant like they just timed that, it, it'd be a pretty good play throughout the night. In case you didn't know, we got ourselves a football game, boys. 6:33 left to go here in this first half. It's been a quick one and an exciting one. Rolling out, and my goodness. It was an Olay defense as Roy Sam trying to get it out to uh, his receiver, number 24, Corey Odom. And he was lucky to get that one away. And the, just the floodgates, Katie barred the door on that one. So what do you think about Warren and playing running back? Uh, wasn't quite, well, here we go with the instant replay. Uh, spreading them out, trying to give them that run pass option. But they got the two guys pulling inside, and, and they just actually jumping in the hip pocket of them pulling guards and making good plays. I think it's Darian Moore, number 58. He has been all over them in the first half. Yeah, these, this defensive front, you know, you know, you got Narcisse and Favorite and all them guys playing linebacker. But, I mean, you, it, it's very seldom you see a defensive front making as many plays as they do. Usually the defensive front kind of keeps them linemen off the line. Linebackers and the linebackers make most of the plays. And the only guy that's not going to be here next year is Jordan Landry, and that ball uh -huh. is fumbled, it's picked up by number 58. More and more could lumber his way for a touchdown. Oh, actually, actually, Casey Narcisse, excuse me, down to the two yard line. He picks up the fumble, chased down by Champlain Babin. There are no flags down, and that was a huge turn of events. We'll take a look at the replay. They are just shooting gaps, and they, I mean, they untouched. Uh, you know, both of them untouched. Right now, they're fighting over who's going to take it to the house. And, he, and uh, Narcisse just picks it up, the big guy who who is being recruited. To how I talked about making all the plays, why he deserved to make that one, but he got ran down. There you see Champlain Babin coming in, making the stop at the two-yard line. Huge turnover and a big run for the 5'9", 269-pound junior. He was Only pretty junior. good. Man, he was huffing. He was he was he was barreling down. He wanted the way. to get in there. You know he did. And for those guys, they live for those moments to get in there. And that's a shame he got stopped. Well, 6:08 left to go here in the first half. And knocking on the door are the Wildcats of St. James, handing off right up the middle, untouched. Number 10 goes in for the score. Jarrell Narcisse, the fullback, and just that quickly, we have a 13-0 ball game. And you really can't make them plays against a good football team like St. James. I mean, if you, you know, Donisville had a good drive going. They made some good positive plays. They made some big plays. And all of a sudden, you give up the fumble. You give it to them on the one-yard line. Now you're down 14 nothing. Your offense has struggled throughout the night. I'm, you know, yeah. at this point, I'm not sure if you can score 14 total. So, I mean, they really got to change some things up and try to try to get the ball moving down the football field and not make mistakes while they're doing it. Nice lead block by Ambrose. And the offensive line on that right side, Larry Clark, Casey Narcisse, and Jordan Landry, and we're going to take a break. The PAT is good by Narcisse. Back right after this from the Cox 4 Game of the Week. There we have the uh, turnover tally brought to you by Roadrunner Towing. You see two for Donaldsonville. Actually, St. James Changes. has turned the ball over once. once. Yeah. Yes, they have. And that's what we were just talking about here in the booth with the turnovers and uh, how they've affected this game so far. I mean, 14 to nothing. And... Strictly been a turnover uh, turnover event here for uh, for Donaldsonville. 
Narcisse puts his foot into it for the third time tonight, and this one looks like it's angling out of bounds, and it will go OB, and they'll have the ball their best field position of the night from the 35-yard line. Jimmy, I'm going to have to excuse him on that one, because did you see what he did? He ran the ball in from about the two-yard <laughs> line untouched, ran to the sideline, changed his shoe, put his kick and shoe on, went in and kicked the extra point, had to run down there and kick, a, kick the ball off, so Narcisse's not going to get much rest tonight. There's nobody going to have to rock him to sleep tonight, I'm sure, because he's a starting middle linebacker, leading tackle on the oh, football team, on. starting fullback. Starting kicker and I want to see who rocks that guy. To sleep. <laughs> you knew that was coming. But yeah, heck of a job by him. Again, we'd love to see the big guy get in there. Great effort by, by both of those guys going down and some really good blocks as we saw. Uh, keep keeping the Donaldsonville uh, Tigers away there, but uh, just a little too much. Gary Atkins said this is one of the best coach football teams that they will see all year and the district Al Roy Sam is just crushed from behind by number 58. Uh, that's uh, more once again. Yeah. My lord. And we talked about Donisonville having to dominate the line of scrimmage. <laughs> uh, I don't think they're going to dominate the line of scrimmage right now. They just got to figure out who to block. I mean, yeah. these guys, I don't know if it's the quickness. I don't know if it's the alignment. You know, they do look like they're running some type of 6 1, uh, but they just walking them outside linebackers up is all they're doing. They play in a 4 3 cover, too, but they're just walking them outside linebackers up. They have to know their responsibility. They've got to get their heads up. they got to find these guys shooting the gap, or they won't even get to play off. Up the middle on the dive play. A big hit in the middle, but I believe. Wait, do they have another fumble? Another fumble, and it goes to St. James. I'm going to tell you what. Byers, Jared Byers, these running backs with Donisville, when they break through the line of scrimmage, they're looking for number 24 because he is trying to hammer people from the free safety position. And they run. This is a nice play. This is a quick trap. You see the guard pulling. That's a nice, nice play against guys that are shooting the gap. But 24 comes out of nowhere, and when he comes, he's trying to really, really pop you. Head on the football, the ball's loose, St. James gets it again. My goodness. Great defensive back. I tell you what, Byers, when they, you know, they gave us a little note saying Byers hits like Ronnie Lott. Byers hits like Ronnie Lott. <laughs> all you got to do is change that 24 to that 42, because Ronnie Lott was one of my favorite players of all time. He would come up and try to take your head off from that free safety position. Man, so far, the defensive player of the game, uh, it's a toss-up between Darian Moore and Jared Byers. Here's Antonio Phillips, going to roll out, throws the football into the dirt. He actually had three guys he could have hit there. Brings up second and ten. Just uh, got a little rushed on that roll out to the right. Yeah, he probably could have ran it for about ten yards, too. He got to the edge, but he did have a couple of guys open. He did make the right read. I believe that was Jordan Landry. They do like to hit Landry coming from that tight end position. He does have a touchdown from there, and uh, he's got 11 catches for 230 yards. So the tight end is no stranger. You know, in this wing T offense, tight end's a major guy and blocking for the buck sweep and that, but they do get him to football. They throw him a bone every now and then. Terry Dumas will split to the top of your screen. There's on the counter in the end around. It's a big run for Gary Davis. Nope, check that. That's number nine, actually. Don't worry about that. That was... That's uh, Demel Dumas, and he gets the first down and a lot more. And 5.07 remaining, the clock stops. Toriano Joshua makes the stop. He's one of the only three returning starters from this Donaldsonville defense. You, you got to like the leader of the offense, though, Phillips leading this offense. I mean, it, Coach Galey loves this guy, makes great decisions. You know, running this wing tee's got a lot of do, run, do a lot of different things as far as spinning this way, spinning that way, sprinting out, and he really leads this offense in the right direction. Rolling to the right, throwing, overthrowing his intended receiver. That was number six, Craig Duroncelet. He'll bring up second down. Here comes the peak performance instant replay. Doing a good job off the play action. Uh, they faking that little G right there. He has no pressure, and, and he kind of ball just kind of looks like it slips out of his yeah. hands a little bit. He was open. Also, he had a guy deeper that was open. So, you know, they Donaldsonville's having to come up and try to take care of this run, and now St. James is saying, well, you're going to send them safeties up. You're going to send them safeties up. We're going to try to hit you over the top and try to get a quick score on you. The usual lineup, and Ambrose got a big hole up the middle. He just jitterbugs his way to the goal line. He was at the 10 when he put the stop on a dime and cut to the left, and Ambrose has a touchdown. Ambrose, the hips on Ambrose, the feet on Ambrose, and the vision. I mean, that he, he actually looked like he should have been tackled, but boy, he makes a good cut. We'll take a look at the replay. They, you know, they just get him in there. They're running that and running right up the middle. Right now, he's unblocked. You see the white shirts downfield. That's a nice cut right there. That's a nice vision. He actually goes in untouched. There you see. Uh... 
Number 10, Jarrell coming off the field. Jarrell Narcisse puts the shoe on and the kick is up. He toes it through. And we have a 21 to zero ball game with just under five minutes to play in this first half. The band's excited in St. James side. We'll be back right after this on the Cox Four Game of the Week. Welcome back, everyone. Sitting with 21 to nothing, the ITI scoring drive, 38 yards, five plays, off of a very critical turnover here. Um, Donaldsonville definitely facing a, uh, a wall of a situation here with this defense right now, Jimmy. Well, the offense has to get something going, and here we go. This kick is booted, but uh, the flag will fly. Somebody must have been off sides as they didn't cross the uh, line of scrimmage or the kicking line before they actually kicked it. Yeah. See, every once in a while I get one right. That was a heck of a kick. He boomed it. Yeah, he got mad the last time that yeah. he kicked out he of heard bounds. You. <laughs> heard you talking about him working hard. <laughs> so back him up five yards, and they'll kick off instead from the 40 to the 45. Tell you what, Donaldsonville's really got to get some presence here, get a, get a first down or two, and, and try to get out of this half possibly with seven, with, with 4.56 left. Plenty of time to get the ball down there and get something done. Yeah, not only do they need to establish getting some first downs, but they need to stop turning the football over. Yeah. Out of the 21 points, 14 points were off the turnover. So yeah. that and with then very little bit of time off the clock. Was able to go down to uh, St. James on Wednesday night for the um, annual Booster Club. And the they have one every week, but uh, they, they invite us every It was awesome. I wish y'all could have made it. I mean, I had gumbo and <laughs> Bebe Cyrano gave us, uh, helped us out and... Uh, Gordon uh, Falgu is there. A bunch of folks we see every year, and we just have so much fun at St. James in their booster club meetings. The quarterback club taken at the 11-yard line by Roy Sam. Sam is going to be pounded by guess who? Your favorite guy. I love him. Your favorite guy, Jared Byers, on the stop. They'll turn it. They'll take over first and ten. Let's take a look at what's happening Tuesday nights on Cox 4. Of course, you don't want to miss the primetime lineup. Follow Louisiana's top prospects on Louisiana Football Magazine at 6.30. Go into the classroom within school at 7.30 and catch movie trailers from the latest pay-per-view movies on Movie Loft at 8 o'clock. The best local programming is only on cable. It's only on Cox 4. Of course, it's the only place you can get the Cox 4 game of the week as well. Next week, where are we going, boys? We're going to Memorial Stadium. We're going to be there a little bit, finish out the year there, actually, two in a row. The regular season is hard to believe we are in week eight already. It really is. First and ten now. Handing off up the middle and going nowhere is the tailback, number 24, Odom. Stopped by Jarrell Narcisse. The defense has just been so strong up there. We were wondering if how, how it was going to match up with the big guys up front of St. James. And... Um, so far now we've got a whole nother half of football to play and coach Atkins is very excited about the way his team has completed football game yeah what I found interesting coming into the game guys was that Donaldsonville was averaging 260 yards rushing per game but St. James is only giving up 66 yards rushing the game so something had to give and right now it looks like that Donaldsonville rushing attack is given well Champagne Babin can go nowhere as he is turned inside by number nine Demel Dumas and then just kind of as he tried to cut back against the green he just slipped down and he loses five yards on that one they're just not getting a scene they're not even getting a, an inkling of a scene well when you got that much team speed and that good of athletes and you're that well coach you know they're running that four three that's the corner back out there they play in that press corner and his job is when he sees run he's got outside containment not only is he getting outside containment, he's getting a five, six yard, you know, tackle behind the line of scrimmage. So and they just, they do the things right and they just go a little bit extra while they're doing the right things. Do they have the ability to kind of, um, I guess, sell out a little bit if that's the right word because of their speed, they can recover like some other teams cannot possibly? Yeah, they can definitely make up and they can play man to man coverage. They feel like they can cover wow. anybody and just send the house and get sacks like that. Down goes Roy Sam. Let's go to Tressy Linedecker and the jambalaya cooks, I think we had some of that. Tressie? Well, thanks, Jimmy. I'm down here with Daryl Marquette, actually known as Coach Marquette a couple of years ago. Actually coached over here at Donaldsonville, is that correct? Yeah, I coached here for 15 years. 
and then now you're on the sidelines doing something a little different. Yeah, well, when I got out of coaching, I, uh, I decided that I still wanted to contribute to the school and the clubs. So what I did is I started cooking jambalaya for all the uh, functions, athletic functions and school functions. And uh, we take that money after we make it and we give it to a club, one of the clubs in the school, uh, and we give all that money to that club. Well, that's awesome. Thank you so much for your contribution. All right, guys, I didn't get a chance to eat any yet, but I saw Dan, uh, Ron eating some before the game. Ron, how was it? It was delicious, Tressy. Very good, as I told your husband. Good jambalaya. Did a great job. Sorry you busted me, but uh, get a little meal. A little pregame meal, Jimmy. You, I, I don't get pregame meals. I mean, you guys. Tressy, you, you have my permission to eat now. 2.31 remaining in this first half. The short punt barely got it off. And uh, again, a very short field for this potent Wildcat offense. Look at number 77 as he comes to the line. That's only a sophomore, Jacob Rodriguez. He's from New Orleans, actually. Came in after the storm. 285 pounds. Rolling out is Antonio Phillips. It's underthrown. The catch is made by Garon Select at the one-yard line, or less than the one-yard line. That is a great offensive effort. Great effort, a good match. Like I said, they're going to try to go up top because Donisville has been sending them safeties once again. Great play action. You see them hide the football, throwing the ball well on the run, and then the receiver just go, doing a good job of going up and get the ball at this highest point. I mean, that's as high as he can go to get that football to come down with the catch. What's interesting about this Donisville team, I mean, the St. James team, this team, this is a very good football team. This team's good enough to win probably state championships in a lot of classifications. But they got to go against that John Curtis yeah. football team next yeah. week. Not only, you know, even if they were the second best team in the state of Louisiana, they still might not win a state championship because of John Curtis. Right. Touchdown for St. James. 27 to 0 is the score. 2.02 left to go in the half, and that didn't take long. They got the ball at the 29 yard line, and a pass to the one, and a run to, from the one. And that's their big matchup next week. You know, we, a lot of people thought, well, maybe they overlooking Donaldsonville, and Donaldsonville is going to give them a good football game. Both teams six and one, and they got John Curtis, which is huge for them coming up next week. This one is good. Uh, Narcisse put it in. You know, they might might would have thought they would overlook this football game, but they're not overlooking. They just fine too. No, they are not. 28 to zero, 202 left to go in the half. We'll be back after this on the Cox Four game of the week. Back everybody, here's the ITI scoring drive, Ron. ITI scoring drive, two plays, 28 yards, going up top, setting it up nicely for the run in. Great effort again. St. James putting the ball wherever they want to. Coach Gailey said he learned a long time ago, it's a lot easier to score from their 20 than it is from ours. So far, he's put that into practice tonight. And when you got a defense like he's got, that's going to happen often. This one coming up to make the catch is going to be Roy Sam. Roy trying to find a, a little bit of a seam, running over folks to the 30-yard line, a 22-yard return on the kickoff, just under two minutes to play. Yeah, we were up here talking a minute ago, guys, and talking with Jody Plochet, who's helping us out tonight. We're not quite sure because we don't have stats. Jody's kind of working on that stuff for us right now, but I'm not sure if Donaldsonville has positive yards right now on offense. I know. Uh, they did have the long pass play, but they also had a few long plays where they lost a lot of yards. Right. So, uh, My, Right now, they're looking at about 10 positive yards, as best I can tell right now. Out of probably should have been around 60 yards total. They've had close to close to 50 yards. Negative. Dropping back, running the, throwing the football is Sam. Sam finds Champlain Babin, who's helicoptered at the 40-yard line, and I think they're going to give him the first down. And they do, so they will stop the clock with 142. And we're going to take a look at the peak performance instant replay. Sam Roy doing a good job of getting to the edge. Uh, and you can see he's running to the right, throws the ball real well on the run. That's a perfect throw. That's a good catch. That's a nice stop right there. He's trying to break tackles and also trying to avoid number 24 Byers coming up and hit him. And, uh, that's a positive play. Jonas on that stop. Jonas Thomas as well, throwing the football on the out route to Dean Werner. And Werner, who we thought was a little bit banged up, was running very well. But that was a little bit off the mark just outside, and they could not complete the pass to Dean Werner. Yeah, this Donaldsville team is banged up. They got their fullback right. hurt. They got guys hurt. I mean, this is a banged up football team. Uh, they do have six wins on a season, which probably, Coach probably don't want me to say that, but probably gets them in the playoffs already. Yeah. Six wins probably get you in. One more win 
probably get you a home playoff game. Yeah. So they, you know, in the next two weeks coming up, they do have a lot to play for. But this team is playoff bound, made the playoffs for the first time last year in 15 years. So wow. Coach Atkins really has this thing heading in the right direction. They're going to make the playoffs last two years in a row. And again, they do have to play John Curtis the last week of the regular season. Running back, dumping it off on the screen pass to Odom. Odom has got a little bit of running room before being pummeled, but still on his feet. Nice job to maintain his wow. balance. How he managed that, I'm not exactly sure, but he crosses the 50-yard line to the 47, and they will move the change. Very nice play call. When you got a team that's showing a, a, a lot of speed coming up the football field, one of the things you do to negate that speed is a screen. And you'll see the white shirts. They almost let them go because they want to let them go. They come in after all. You see all the white shirts that they let go. It's tipped. Yeah, now you got the black shirts downfield. This is that's a nice strategy against a team that runs real well. That's been uh, you know getting a lot of penetration on the offensive side of the ball. Put that right hand down and kept his balance and kept moving forward. We do have a timeout on the field. 118 remaining here in this first half. And there you see Coach Gary Atkins and his coaching staff talking things over with his offense. They're going to make some adjustments at halftime. This is a very good coaching staff for Donaldsonville. Oh, yeah. Both, both, both coaching staffs are incredible, but uh, the same, you know, four scores. Got, you know, he can get back into this game. Oh, yeah. Coach Atkins, he will make adjustments. Coach, he's been around a long time. He's had some very good football teams. I coached an all-star game with him. I mean, he knows what he's doing with his football team. He knows what it's going to take for this football team to get in playoffs and also make a run when they get there. You know, like I said, he is a little banged up. He's got to get some people healthy for next week. It's a good football team, good program. Uh, they play in, which I think is one of the better teams in the state. They have probably two of the better teams in 2A in their district with John Curtis and St. James. So the district's very tough. But this team's playoff bound. Coming to the line of scrimmage, first and 10. 78 seconds to put something on the scoreboard here in the first half. You got two receivers split to the bottom of your screen. First time we've seen the empty set tonight, huh? Yes, it is. And again, under center, they do not go out of the shotgun very much, if at all. And my oh. goodness, a collision on Roy Sam. Again, I believe that was number 27 coming up. Jonas Thomas to make that stop, along with number 11, Jared Favorite. And another timeout has been called. Here's the peak performance instant replay. What's the collision? Yeah, and most of the time they've been running trips and they've been sprinting into the trips and uh, they may be slanting a little bit that way, but wow, what, uh, what a great hit. Both guys, that's Landry again on the play. I mean, <laughs> this defense really flies around. They don't give you a whole lot of time to get to that edge. I mean, you're going to have a white shirt in your face every time you try to get there. We had some pretty good hitting last week against uh, with Redemptress and Plaquemine. I would dare say very easily that this has been some of the hardest hitting football that we've seen all season. Yeah, well, you know, we expected a tough football game. We expected, you know, both communities are backing both of these programs. Uh, uh, that, that both communities all here tonight. There's a lot of people here tonight. And, you know, both these, in, both these teams are fired up. It's a big district football game. And uh, they want to get out there and have a, a tough football game. And they want this rivalry to continue to be right. that type of game. St. James 1-0 and in district play. Donaldsonville 1-1. One and one. The winner of this one controls its own destiny. I mean, when you say controls its own destiny, they have to beat John Curtis, but still, it's in their hands. Right. They control it until they meet John Curtis. <laughs> well, you know, ask Hoover, Alabama about that. <laughs> they lost four on that last play back into their own territory at the 49-yard line. Roy Sam's going to pitch it to Champlain Babin, and Babin it dances out of trouble. He's got a little running room. Switches hands on the ball, and I believe it came out, and there's a fumble. And uh, retaining possession is Donaldsonville. But I was surprised he even made it that far, and he picks up about 13 yards. We've got 45 seconds on the clock, and it continues to tick. I love the addition of the clock to our scoreboard, by the way, on the RSC scoreboard, and a timeout is called. Here's the peak performance instant replay. And they run an option this way, and I tell you what, I can see why Babman averages nine yards a carry. Nine yards a carry carrying the football, that's pretty unbelievable, but he is just individually making people block. You know, there's a lot of black shirts just kind of standing there looking right now. He's saying, I'm going to try to take this thing to the house. 
and he's just making people miss fumbles the football at the end. But uh, Babin has uh, 52 carries for 442 yards, six touchdowns, but nine yards every time he touches the football. That's pretty impressive. Good north-south running, too, as we saw there, and on some other plays as well. He's got some pretty good Barry Sander-type yeah. hips, too. I mean, you can see them quick hips when, you know, when he's stopping and cutting, and, and we saw it on the other side with Ambrose, but that's two pretty good backs we got tonight. Really needs to hold on to that football, though, when he gets in traffic. Need to put that thing away when you get in traffic. Just pound and get three extra yards and go down and give your football team another chance. Yeah, from he, a, okay, Jimmy, I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say that from his, uh, his wingback spot, he is the second leading rusher with uh, 442 yards on the season. I was going to compare the size of Davis and, and him. A lot of moves in their right. cuts are a lot alike. Very hard to find, too, as you were trying to look in that replay. Roy throwing downfield, and it's intercepted. And he's going to come out from the end zone, and it was number three. What a lick. Champlain Babin came up and laid him out. There we go. Wow. Yeah, wow Jeez. is right. Wow, I don't even know what to say about that one. I hope he's okay. He got rocked. Marcus Dumas, I believe, is the guy that made the interception. Uh, and, and Roy's throwing it up right here, just trying to make something happen for his team. But we'll see on the intercept. I think Babbin is mad because he didn't catch the ball. He's been wanting the ball all night. Folks, watch this hit by number 10. It is Dumas Some, on the interception. Sometimes you just be quiet and let the show do the talking. Yeah, I would say that was a pretty good hit. Wow. <laughs> that will probably make the down hits of the week. And uh, Champlain is not happy that they don't have the football anymore, but he is happy about making the stop. 27.1 on the clock, and we gotten shaken up. I would have imagined he got the wind knocked out of him. Yeah, I hope for this young man he's okay. He took a heck of a hit, as we saw there, and kind of moved around and squirmed around a little bit after the play, but uh, I think probably just his bell rung pretty good. Yeah, I think he was a little surprised. You know, he started, like he started stumbling a little bit, and he put his head down, and when he picked his head up, Babin was right there. To Champlain make Babin says, welcome to Donaldsonville. Let's take a look again at this um, definitely Dow hit. Of the year. So far, we still have some playoff games to go. Yeah, you're right. He's just trying to catch his balance and looks up and The Mack truck that is Champlain Babin. We're going to take a quick break. 27.1 on the clock for the first half back after this. Marcus Dumas is up and uh, on his own power comes off the field. So we're glad to see that. Let's take a look at it one more time. Tough way to end the play on your interception, huh? Yeah, I mean, it's a great hit by Babin, but boy, you don't like to see guys put their head down. You just when right. he puts his head down right here and hits the crown of his helmet, that, that's, Scary. that's very dangerous on his part. If we were playing on Sundays, he would be fine. They'd, they'd be calling him up tomorrow and probably hit him for $100,000, but we're not playing on Sundays. Just dangerous, yeah, you don't want to duck it. All right, so it'll be no down this one, I'm sure. They will have to get make sure they're not in the end zone when they kneel it. And they do go forward, and he downs it at the one-yard line, and that'll do it pretty much for the first half of play. It has been an exciting first half. 28-0 to zero is our first-half score. It started off very quickly, the second play of the football game on a long pass, a 33-yard pass to, from, Ambro, uh, excuse me, to Anto from Antonio Phillips to Ambrose. And we'll go through all the scoring as we head to the Baton Rouge Coca-Cola halftime show here from Floyd Butte Stadium in Donaldsonville, Louisiana. Right now, they're going to have to regroup for the black shirts from Donaldsonville. St. James playing a very exciting style of football. And Tressie's going to have Coach Gary Atkins momentarily. But a beautiful night for football, and it's been an interesting game. And let's head to Tressie Leindecker now. Tressie? But thanks, Jimmy. Coach, you're trailing 28 to nothing, but your team is actually playing a pretty good ball ball game tonight. Well, you know, I was just telling the kids just now after that kid got injured that, the, you know, our biggest uh, opponent right now is ourselves. You know, we're fumbling the ball and that kind of deal. But, um, you know, it's a beautiful Friday night, and I think the kids are having fun. We're going to go in there and see if we can get some things going. You know, old halftime speech kind of overrated right now. We just got to go in there and get some kids going to come out and make some plays for us. I think we'll be okay. 
Well, Gary, there's no doubt you're a great coach and you've done a m miraculous job with this program. So what do you tell your kids at halftime to bring them out of this deficit? Well, I tell them, you know, the thing I'm going to remind them is about playing uh, Donaldsonville high football and playing with a lot of pride and a lot of determination and, um, you know, coming back and making some big plays against a very quality opponent in St. James. So, <clears throat> you know, these are kind of games that we got to learn how to get over the hunt with. And, uh, you know, it, you know, the old saying is the most insignificant score in a football game is the one at halftime. So we're going to remind them of that. And we're going to come back out and play hard. Well, thank you so much. Good luck in the second thank half. Thank you, Tracy. All right. When we return, we'll have halftime festivities here. We've got two great bands with St. James and Donaldsonville. Stay tuned, everyone. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Coca-Cola Halftime Show brought to you by Baton Rouge Coca-Cola. The halftime score, St. James 28, Donaldsonville 0. Randy, it was um, an interesting first half of football, a lot of turnovers that we saw, uh, but the speed, we just we talked about it the entire game, the speed of the defense has just been overpowering. Yeah, and, and what I see this game turn, what well, the first half of this game was all about in the trenches. Donaldsonville up front, you know, they got two freshmen up there, they only have one senior, they got, a, you know, they get rest of the guys are juniors, only one senior, two freshmen. This front of St. James is really beating up this front of Donaldsonville yeah. right now. And that, that's allowing them linebackers and safety to just fly around without anybody touching them. They get they get a lot of penetration and breaking up a lot of plays. So you don't see a lot of plays being ran real smooth. There's just so much penetration up there. The Tigerettes are dancing as we speak for Donaldsonville. Uh, like we saw, heard from Coach Atkins, he's going to go into to the half to halftime, talk with his team, to remind them. This game's not over yet. I love what he said, and that's Coach Action, that yeah, Coach Atkins to a T, saying, you know, the halftime speech is overrated. I just need to go in that locker room and look a few of these guys in our eyes and try to get a few of these guys to come out and just battle. And that's right. what we need to do. It ain't about we're not going in there and changing our scheme and, and doing it's just about do you want to battle against this football team tonight? He was going to look for that in his guys right now. Well, let's yeah. take a look at what's going on at St. James High School. They've been very accommodating to us. Uh, we are at Donaldsonville, or at least Floyd Boutte Stadium. But nonetheless, we had a great time at Donaldsonville, uh, excuse me, at St. James earlier this week. And they've got a lot of great things happening at St. James High School is a wonderful place to be. Our students excel academically in math and science. We have a math science magnet school that's in partnership with the LSU School of Engineering. We are happy to announce that we now have a marching band. Our band is developing rapidly, so look for our band in competition in the near future. We have a great football program, and you haven't seen speed until you've played St. James High School. St. James High School is doing great things, and that's why our motto is excellence in all things. The band coming off the field, the Tiger Marching Band from Donaldsonville High School putting on a great show for the fans here at Floyd Boutte Stadium. We're here at halftime. We'll be back right after this. You are watching the Cox 4 Game of the Week. Welcome back, everybody, to the Coca-Cola Halftime Show. 28-0 to 0 is the score. St. James over Donaldsonville. We're going to have the halftime kick in just a minute. Let me tell you something. Yeah, everybody needs, we have two games left, everybody. Two games left for you to come to a Cox 4 game of the week. They're both at Memorial, and you can register for an iPod Nano from Toyota presented by Football, Food, and Families and Cox Communications. And also, you will have a chance to kick a 25-yard field goal at halftime, which we're doing right now, for a year's worth of Cox cable high-speed internet and digital cable service. It's a, an over an $1,800 value. And all you have to do, come and register at the Toyota tent. We've got a, a young man who thinks he looks like he knows what he's doing. I'm not sure if he, if he does. We'll have to wait and see. He's spinning the ball, making sure it's all fluffy for him or whatever you do with the football when you're getting ready to kick a 25-yard field goal. Compress, compress. Compress, that's right. Compressing. Sorry, not fluffy. Compress it. Where's Patrick when we need him? Patrick is over and um, watching the, well, broadcasting the game with Jeff Palermo in Acadiana. And there we see him. Here we go, the Tressy Linebacker. Well, guys, he had the whole St. James clan over here cheering for him but unfortunately he missed it but we 
thank him for his opportunity. He's going to try to make another attempt, but this one doesn't count. No, it does I, not. I think he's just trying to save face at this point. Well, he does save a little bit of face, but it doesn't count, and that's a shame. <laughs> it may have gone through the uprights, my friend, but it doesn't count. That's a shame. Well, that's all. Our, that's the fun we have at halftime. You need to come out and register for that halftime kick. And uh, you, too, could have an opportunity to be cheered on by fans and teams alike. Me? Well, we're going to go to the Donaldsonville Teacher of the Week. Welcome back, everyone. You're watching the Cox 4 Game of the Week, where St. James is actually winning to Donaldsonville 28 to nothing. I'm down here with Coach Gailey, head coach of St. James. You guys are doing a great job. What do you tell them at halftime? Uh, to keep their intensity and to play every play. I mean, that's all you can do in a football game is play every play to the best of your ability, and the score doesn't mean anything. We have to evaluate ourselves on how well we play each play and without relaxing. And can you give us an injury update on Dumas? Yeah, uh, Marcus uh, got lit up pretty good uh, on his interception return. It appears that it's just the wind knocked out of him, a lot of wind knocked out of him, but all his teeth are there and his face is still good. I uh, haven't found any organs straight around, so I think he's, he's, he's going to be fine. I don't know about for the rest of tonight, but he'll, he'll, he'll recover. Young kids do that. Well, thank you so much. Good luck in the second half, Coach. Thank you. All right, guys. Thanks thank a you. lot, Tressie. It's time to take a look at stats with Ron McDaniel. And, uh, you know, you got to love Coach Gailey. He's exciting. Yeah, that was pretty neat. Uh, good, good, uh, good, good description of his uh, young man there and the hit that he took. Uh, those are always tough. But uh, the uh, we'll take a look at the stats here. Take a look at the, the game is uh, rushing-wise uh, pretty close there. Actually, we have 10 yards of rushing for, uh, for Donaldsonville, uh, positive yards, and 90 yards for uh, St. James. 61 yards for St. James passing with 66 yards for Donaldsonville. Again, the big play. 46-yard uh, one-play pass. Turnovers, definitely a reason why we're sitting here with 28 to nothing. One turnover for St. James, really managing the ball well tonight. One of the things I know that working that clock, as Coach talked about prior to the game, four for Donaldsonville. And penalties, pretty even there with two apiece. Uh, not really having a lot of penalties here. Both teams seem to be coming out, coming out of the block pretty well. We had a couple of silly uh, a kickoff penalty, uh, out-of-bounds penalty, those kind of things. But uh, overall, Jimmy, as we talked, we've been talking through the game, three of us, definitely uh, looking at the turnovers, you know, and then we look at our score, our stat sheet here, direct uh, uh, scores right off of these turnovers within the, just a few plays, three, four, five plays each time, sometimes one. You have the short field, you know, you don't rack up a lot of yards, but uh, you rack up a whole lot of points, and uh, they have been very effective. And just like Coach Kaley said, you know, he's just got to make sure that his team does not let down or not let down but let their their guard because you're up by four touchdowns it can change very quickly they put 61 uh, excuse me 60 points against uh washington marion last week yeah and he, he made a good point he's going to evaluate these kids tomorrow morning on every single play not just the first half so i mean you know you got guys out there fighting for your job they need to continue to play every single play they need not worry about the score you need to try to dominate your opponent on every single play, and your team would be successful. Something tells me they're not going to let down. I don't believe so. I he's, saw the intensity in the first quarter, the first you, half. When you make the quarterfinals mm -hmm. 10 times in the last 14 years, your team's not going to let down. And you're 15 minutes away from the school. You grew up with these kids. And they do play all sports together. They, you know, they, they, the schools uh, have a lot of interaction. The kids have a lot of interaction. And it's a good rivalry. It has really become a good rivalry for these two schools, and the communities are really supporting the Donaldsonville Tigers and the St. James Wildcats, and that's something that we like to see because it's fun when we're out here and they have such uh, great crowds on hand. We are ready to start the third quarter. It's the Cox 4 game of the week, and the third quarter is underway. It will be taken at the 14-yard line. Got a little bit of running room. This is Duroncelet. He's down to the... 36 yard line and that's where they take over first and 10. Talking about the robbery and it's only going to get better. I mean uh, Donaldsonville's program is up on the rise been playing better football and you know they expected tonight's football game. They finally getting the attitude to think that they could beat St. James. You know right, St. James right. beat up on them for a lot of years and now they starting to feel like hey we can play with these guys and, it, and every year it's getting a little tighter and tighter and they're playing a little bit better football sooner or later it's going to be neck and neck and one of these times it's going to pop up and beat them. Well, you know, we had these guys last year on the Cox 4 game of the week. It was St. James and Donaldsonville at St. James last year. 42-15, to 15, I believe, was the final score. 
St. James, and this is a big run by Ambrose. Nice cut to the backside, and he's off to the races. He's at the 20, 15, 10, and stomped at the eight-yard line. Nice run that time, though, and he was run down by, guess who, Champlain Babin. I'm very surprised he was run down. Ambrose runs a 4-3 in the 10, 600 meters. He can fly, and, you know, he's averaging 12 yards a carry. We talked about Babin averaging nine. He averages 12 yards a carry every time he touches the football. Got to give them big guys credit again. Though. We'll watch on the replay to run the buck sweep. Watch these two guards, okay? There's one pulling out. There's your kickout block. There's your lead block. All he's doing is jumping in that big guy's hip pocket. There's a great block downfield, and after that, hey, you got to make one cut, and you just try to take it to the house. We talked about the white shirts being downfield, but that time there wasn't a chance for any of those, those downfield blocking white shirts. That was, by the way, number 55 leading that blocking scheme was Daryl Ambrose, the brother of Luther Ambrose. He's only a sophomore, and this is Darrell Narcisse crossing the five to about the two. Yeah, Narcisse has got to love when they get inside the 10. It looks like he gives the football <laughs> to the big guy, and then he's going to run to the sideline and change his shoe and kick the extra point. But yeah, he gets some touches down here in the red zone. He has five touchdowns on the season. He's got 41 carries for 261 yards, and he does have five touchdowns. He's only a junior now. He's a 200-pound fullback, only a junior starting middle linebacker. You no, know, and also as a credit to this St. James squad is the fact that they've had six or, or five or six coaches now that they have that played for St. James, played for Rick Gailey, are now on the coaching staff. And there's a handoff to the right side, and it's Gary Davis in for the touchdown from two yards out, and just that quickly they score on about four or five plays, we'll get the scoring drive in just a bit, and Narcisse will change his shoe and do the honors. <laughs> hey, going back to Coach Galley and his coaching staff, you got to really like the way, and, and this is what makes all great head coaches, is the what he surrounds himself right. with, with assistant coaches. But what he's done, Coach Galley is full of knowledge. I mean, he teaches other high school coaches about this swing tee. He, he has lectures, and he has all these meetings, and, you know, he knows he has all this no good on the extra point, Derek, quickly. Information on this offense, and then he's got, he surrounds himself with these young guys full of this energy and right. full of, you know, the, the younger football players understanding the young coaches, so they really have a good mixture. We're going to take a quick break. 10.57 left to go in the third quarter. We'll be back after this on the Cox 4 game of the week. Welcome back. ITA scoring drive. Four plays, 65 yards. Great uh, run there by uh, Ambrose totaling uh carrying 65 yards or 60 yards of that load but uh punched in there by number five gary davis as we've seen him tonight be in a lot of places with the ball and uh, they did a great job there finishing that finishing that short drive off last week they were up 60 to 20 against washington mary and the lights went out and coach gailey said they were about eight minutes left as you see champlain babin collect the football on the kickoff and he is just massacred at the 12, make that the 16-yard line, 17-yard line. Uh, they had eight minutes left. The lights went out. And uh, he said, no, we're going to finish this game because I want my young guys to play. And yeah. that's what, you know, he likes. He wants to get everybody involved. He wants to build the program as he's done for 15 years now. And, and it shows. And that's why this team is where it's right. at tonight. You're exactly right. And, 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 you know, let's not forget, we talked about them not overlooking Donaldsville, but they do have John Curtis right. next week. Right. He'd be very, he would be, he would be <laughs> pleased to be able to sit some of these guys down tonight and get a little, right. little extra rest and not get anyone hurt. That was one of the things I was going to talk about earlier, is I was wondering if they would do that indeed. Landry again on that stop, and you saw nine guys or eight guys in the box, and uh, they're also getting some of the younger guys in there. Also, Larry Clark on the stop, a junior playing defensive tackle. You know, uh, you know, coaching around the area and watching a lot of high school football games, what, what I see yeah. usually makes a pretty good defense is, is yeah. defense really, really hitting. I mean, the yeah. whole team hits. You know, a lot of people talk about technique and talk about speed and all this. But if you got a defense that will just hit anybody in the opposite color jersey standing around, <laughs> that defense is usually pretty doggone good. Again, they just stack the line of scrimmage, and the run can go nowhere. Brings up third down, and you see number 27 on the stop, Jonas Thomas, and they just unpile. Everybody's in on the stop basically with a white jersey on. Clark in there from his middle linebacker spot. And they tried to sneak that little, sneak that little uh, quick trap on him, which has been pretty successful tonight. But not only is St. James getting penetration, but they're doing a good job of reading. And then that's what you have to do in that quick trap. When that guard, guard pulls, you kind of have to squeeze down and jump in that hip pocket and pull with him. And they're doing a good job of that. So they're slowing that quick trap down. I would say we're going to see some, some passing out of the Donaldsonville Tigers, but they just haven't had any time to throw the football. I mean, uh, even passing has been very, very difficult. 
and have completed a couple of quick ones. But uh, the defensive line has been in the backfield almost as soon as they get the snap off. Yeah, most of the, most of the passes that Roy has got off tonight has, has been because of his athletic ability. Let's take a look now as there's a timeout on the field at the Callaway Fitness Strongman of the Night for the Donaldsonville Tigers. It's, uh, we'll, we'll come back to him, but it is Dean Warner. He is uh, the guy that's been banged up a little bit. He's number 13. There he is right there, and nicely right in the middle of the huddle, but uh, he is playing tonight. Pound for pound, he is the strongest Tiger that they have. He's a senior quarterback. He's been playing a lot of wingback tonight. He benches 300 pounds and squats 535. Now, I got to tell you how big this kid is. 5'11", 181, and he's benching 300 pounds. 180 pounds, and he's benching that Good squat. Man. And, and, and that, that's, that's pretty doggone good. That's unbelievable. And he, he is, he's been hampered a little bit by that strained patella tendon, but, uh, you know, that's something that they would like to see over at, at Callaway Fitness on Jefferson Highway. He could give some clinics to uh, McDaniel over here on how to do some squats and maybe a little benching. All right, they would love to see him in there, and they, they do got a lot of big guys in there like that lifting. And, and, you know, like you said, Callaway's is, welcomes everyone. It's a great family, fun, fitness atmosphere. Yeah, a yeah. lot of things to do, the indoor pool, the outdoor pool. There's hot tubs and saunas, and, you know, there's a lot to do for the family also. First time we've seen Roy Sam keep it from his quarterback spot, and he gets the first down. Great call. That time he takes the snap, and on a quarterback draw, he gets to the 34-yard line. And the first down with 9-10 remaining in the quarter. So they'll move the change, and uh, that is the first time that we've seen Roy Sam. You know, Roy is um, awfully good running back. He's a pretty good quarterback, but he's, he's the leading rusher. And at quarterback, he doesn't get to run the ball very much. He's got 58 carries for 457 yards, seven touchdowns, and averaging eight yards a carry when he's able to do so from his tailback spot. Again, eight guys in the box, and they hand off to the fullback. He's got some running with it. Champlain Babin, is he going to be in for the touchdown? He's going to be chased down from behind at the 15-yard line. Number 14, Terry Dumas, 4-4 speed for him, chases him down. Let's take a look at, at the peak, in, peak uh, performance to replay. Running the outside veer, and if you don't take the dive back and you get a block down on that linebacker, that's what's going to happen. He makes a good cut. Makes a good cut in the secondary right there. Gets ran down from behind. But, well, you look at the, the skill guys for Donisville, and we always talk about the speed of St. James, but Donisville's loaded with speed over there, too. You know, I'm looking at the quarterback, fullback, tailback, you know, the slot back, and split in. None of these guys are over 200 pounds. Right. I mean, they're all around 170 pounds. They're a small football team back there. They've been taking some hits tonight, but if you give them a hold, they're all quick enough to take it to the house. I need to correct myself. That was not Babbitt on the carry. That was number 40, Randall Rome, his first carry of the night, and it was a big one. This is going to be Roy Sam pulling it back, heading for the corner. He's out of bounds at the two-yard line. Two big runs for that young man on this drive. Yeah, Coach Atkins has got to be. Uh, I mean, I'm sure he wants his team to score right now, but, you know, he, like I said, we, he went in at halftime and he looked at a few of these guys in the eyes and he wanted some people to just come out and compete. And he's got a few people to compete right now. Well, let's take a look at the Callaway strongman now for the Donaldsonville, excuse me, for the St. James Wildcats. It's number 52, Casey Narcisse. There he is right there in the middle of your screen. He's the strongman. He's the junior right tackle and defensive tackle. Bench is 325. Squats a mere 600. Jeez. How about a 600-pound squat? What does a 600-pound bar look like? <laughs> it's how bent. many plates it's is that? It's bending a lot, Jimmy. There's a yeah, lot of weights on both sides. If I had a calculator, I could bend. figure out how many plates that is. Uh, that big 600-pound squat got tackled at the one-yard line tonight. <laughs> he should have scored that touchdown. <laughs> and that's a fumble, fumble. snap. Falling on the it. football, and St. James says they have the football, and they do. That Don uh, Donisville has killed himself all night. And that is a shame. Good drive and couldn't hang on to the football. They fumbled the snap. Let's take a look at the instant replay. Just falling, not couldn't fall on the football. You see the uh, I don't think referee he, was yeah. right there, but I don't think he ever got it. He I agree. He never had control of the football. Well, it was a good drive. It means that they have the capability, and they will try to do it after they hopefully stop the St. James offense. The Wildcats pinned deep. 
This is the worst field position, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that they have started off with. St. James has. Other, other than the uh, ah, yes. they hit at halftime, but yeah, and they kneeled it. Right. right. I believe we got some fresh faces in there, especially up front. Antonio Phillips is still the quarterback and handing the ball away. That was Ambrose again carrying for eight yards. Let's take a look at the Roadrunner towing turnover tally. Five for Donaldsonville, only one for St. James. And St. James has been able to capitalize on two of those for touchdowns. It, this is a good chance for St. James just to really run the football, burn up some clock. You know, we talked about them controlling the clock at the beginning of the football game. This is a good opportunity to do it. You know, you got the football game in hand. You don't want to get anybody hurt. Just try to get a nice long drive in here and burn a lot of this clock. Well, this time they hand off once again. He's stacked up forward. Progress will give him to the 15-yard line, which is enough for a first down. I actually didn't even see who carried the football. I believe... It was Narcisse, but I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't put an oath to it. Hey, he's got, you know, Coach gale has got some of his skill guys in there, but I believe everyone up front is is a second team or is a reserve player. So, you know, he's he is getting some of these younger guys in, like Jimmy talked about early in the game, and, and that's how he's established this program that he has. It was actually Ambrose, I believe, on that last carry. This is a handoff to Davis. Davis looks for a hole, and he's got a little bit of running room, and he. Has somebody hit a, hit a ride that time. Number 45 is going to um, get on board. Hiram show And let's go to Tressie Leindecker. Well, thanks, guys. Coach Gailey is actually a roller coaster junkie. He travels to Walt Disney World three to four times a year. This year he's only been once, but he plans on going back for New Year's. This past summer he took a Segway tour, and although it only went seven miles an hour, he had the most exciting time of his life. That's something to be said for an adrenaline junkie this past summer he also went to cedar point ohio which boasts the first 300 foot coaster called the millennium force and the first 400 coaster named the top thrill dragster which takes you zero to 125 in six seconds gailey said it's a lot like football because because he said it's a lot like football except football's over a lot quicker guys <laughs> thanks a lot Tressie. they fumbled this <laughs> Excuse me. Fumble the football falling back on it was the, uh, I believe, tailback uh, Ambrose. <coughs> yeah, they lost two yards there on that uh, fumble. But they even know recover. what Y'all even know what a Segway is? Yeah, I do. I've you ever ridden one? I have not. I've seen one of those little two wheel deals yeah. where you just kind of lean forward and it goes. I see a lot of. Uh, I, I want to get one. In Chicago and saw some uh, some of the police metropolitan really? downtown police. Oh, look at this! An interesting play to Davis as they hand off what looked like it was going to be a bootleg, and Davis spins his way pirouette for about nine, make it 12, 13 yards as he gets to the 37 yard line. Let's take a look at the peak performance instant replay. And I, I really thought he was running the football. Yeah, nice ball fake. I thought the fullback had it in the middle. That's that, what, what you call a crisscross. That's what they call it in this wing T offense. And it, it, you show flow going one way and you come back up and underneath the other way. And uh, getting 10 yards and, like we said, keeping that clock moving. That clock is really rolling right now. They just want to kind of ground it out a little bit, get first down. Not really worried about scoring again. If it happens again, good. But they just want to really run this uh -oh. ball. Fumble bounces right back in his hands and he fumbles it again. It bounced back in his hands. That was uh, number 24, Jared Byers. Let's take a look. Let's take a peek actually, at the replay. Running that buck sweep again. You'll see the younger guys he's got in pulling right now. You see the lineman pulling. I guess uh, Coach Gailey saw Byers uh, giving enough licks over there on the defensive side of the ball. He said he'd give him the ball a little bit on the offense, but uh, it didn't work out with the fumble. Again, that was Daryl Ambrose leading on that buck sweep, pulling from his guard position. Number 34 in on the stop, David Hampton. Brings up second down and 16. 440 left to go in the third quarter. There's a little counter, a little trap to uh, Gary Davis, and Davis is stopped at the line of scrimmage. Stopped by number 56, Murray Stewart, six foot, 183 pound junior. Odom also on that play. Six seven. I mean five five seven. Wow. 
168-pound junior strong safety, making a nice play on that. Now we've got a third long situation. Maybe they can try to force St. James to throw the football, try to get a pick right here, maybe try to get a sack, cause a fumble. They just need something positive to happen right now. Fire split to the bottom of your screen. In fact, he's so far out, you can't even see him. And it's going to be Antonio Smith coming back in the fumble. It looks like it could be Donaldsonville football, but we'll have to wait for the call. And no, and they may have called it an incomplete. Did they call it an incomplete pass? No, they called it a pass and a fumble. I okay. think they fumbled about three or four times on this drive, yeah, but they got every one of them back. When the ball bounces your way, it just bounces your way. So they'll have to punt this one out. Yeah, and I'm sure Coach Gale is not happy right now. You know, he talked at halftime about his team staying focused and playing every play like it's your last play and, and you know, really taking control of your opponent on every play and three fumbles on that one drive. I'm sure he's not pleased. So fourth and uh, about 26, and they will punt it. This is a nice booming kick. It will be collected at the 42-yard line, and right there, the Gunners are right there along with Deron Soleil making the stump. Let's take a look at what happens Wednesday night on Cox 4. You don't want to miss the primetime lineup. Well, get the latest on local business with BR Business TV at 7. Enjoy the best in local in South Louisiana music with Do Drop In at 8 o'clock and slide into some R&B with a local twist. Fat, fat, and all that at 9 o'clock. Remember, the best local programming is only on cable and it's only on Cox 4. Can't get it anywhere else, guys. No, you won't. Only on Cox 4. So, first and 10 with 3.03 left in the third. Whistle is blowing. They're going to get it. Where's the get back, coach? Jeff Palermo always talked about the get back, coach. Got to be in the box. Oh, the yeah. official's getting them back. I think he's trying to get back the police. <laughs> <laughs> First and 10 for the Donaldsonville Tigers. Werner stops wow. at there's the 27 guy, yard line. Sorry, Jimmy, there's, there's Randy's guy there. Byers getting in there and uh, getting all over. Yeah, I'm just gonna call him Ronnie Lott from now on. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna pretend like that's 42 out there instead of 24. That's, that's just shooting the gap, that's seeing that alley, and that's that explosive speed once you see the ball carry. That's that next gear that all good football players have. Second and 19, here's the... You know, what, what's amazing about him, I think he's like 180 pounds, and he plays like he's 220 pounds. He's 5'11", 170 pounds senior, and plays like he's about 215 he back came, there at free safety. He came into the game with 27 solo tackles, chased out of the pocket, and hits Werner in the back of the head. Take turns, shooting the gap. That was uh, <laughs> uh, Jarrell... Narcisse uh, chasing him that time. And uh, no, uh, Warner just never turned. But like you guys talked about a while ago, I mean, we, they'd love to establish a passing game, but uh, how do you do that? Yeah, you get starts You're running up for front. your life. You know, you always hear coaches talk about it starts up front, it starts right. up front on both sides of the ball, and you see the defense having a better, right. you know, having a better side up front tonight. And they just, you know, they, they're just so quick in there. It's, it's what I see. It's just they shoot gaps, and when, Donisonville tries to pull some of these linemen to get outside. They're pulling them, but the defensive tackle's faster than the linemen pulling yeah. them, and he's beating him there. It's going to be interesting to see how they match up with um, John Curtis next week. Dropping back now, rolling to his left, looking for somebody, throwing it downfield, and it's right into the midst of number 14, that being Terry Dumas, and Dumas will collect the interception. They'll take over first and 10 at the 21-yard line. Let's watch this inter interception. And this is Roy Sam. You know, he, he's just trying to make something happen. Once again, you see the white shirt. They're all trailing him. He knows he's going to get hit. Throws the ball very long on the run and really just out throws the receiver right here. And the free safeties, you know, they're taught not to get beat deep, and that's what he did. Pretty good catch for the defensive back. That's a very Great good catch. catch. I think he plays a little offense, too, so he knows how to handle yeah. football. You know, they, like you said, they they developing – some depth tonight to play John Curtis, and that's what you talked about getting these younger guys in, and that's what it's going to take. John Curtis got a lot of Division One recruits. Uh, I watched him play in the state championship last game, last season in Shreveport, and Joe McKnight, I believe, is one of the best football players in the state of Louisiana, if not the country. He was pretty unbelievable to me. 
Uh, so the St. James will have a big task next week, and that, this will determine how good a football team they really have. That was um, quite a run that time for Gary Davis. He didn't get much. In fact, he lost a couple of yards, but he was hit and hit and hit again before finally being brought down. Yeah, I like Davis. I like the way he runs, slashing sideline, good vision, able to get out and make some good plays that we saw in the last few drives. Even in the first half, uh, going to him in some some second and long, third and long situations. Dean Werner on the sideline discussing things with his coach. This is a little counter up the middle. Nope, check that. It's Ambrose. Ambrose at the 30-yard line and running about that. Late hey. That, yeah, I thought that would draw the flag. It's been a very well-played football game in terms of penalties. Really Not nice. having very been very many. That was just a... I don't think it was anything malicious on that one. I think he just got away from it and didn't realize where he was on the field. Well, Ambrose looked like a load when he's coming at you, huh, Randy? Oh, yeah, and he's quick. He's that 10-6, that 4-3 guy, and he's got that straight-up running style, but he's really getting him up and getting him down. But, you know, getting back to the penalties, you know, what hadn't been many penalties at all tonight, and that's a testament to these coaches. This is right. two well-coached football teams. Ball, late hit, out of bounds on the defense. 15 yards, first down. James Kellis, our referee tonight. Here's Gary Atkins in his third year. He's had a very good season up to this point, and, and uh, I think he's going to he's going to find positives in this. There's some things they have to work on, obviously, but knowing Gary Atkins and the way that he coaches and the way and his attitude, he's going to find positives to talk with his team about. As you see, uh, Jarrell Narcisse is stopped after gaining three. Well, right there, I mean. It They've done a good job of, of holding them a lot of times tonight in, in defense. They're we not saw quitting. that in the first half. No, oh, not, not at all. They're not going to quit on the coach no. Atkins. But, but, you know, you see the St. James. St. James got a lot of guys playing both ways. You know, I noticed that early on in the season. Got a lot of guys still playing both ways. And, and you know, they're going to have to rest up next week. That's going to hurt them a little yeah. bit against uh, John Curtis next week. You know, so they may, you know, come this fourth quarter, he might try to get some of these starters out, get them rest up. It's going to be a long game, ball game next week. Where are they playing that game? Do we know? Uh, it didn't look on the schedule. Yeah, I didn't either. Uh, Davis will be stopped after gaining two. 20 seconds left to go in the third quarter. It's been a long third quarter, it seems, for some reason. I, boy, I like that clock up there. That's pretty nice. That's the first time we've had that, right? Yeah, it is. It really means... adds a lot to it. I like that. All right. It is time after eight seconds for... The Dow hits of the week. Now, we saw some pretty good hitting last week. We'll have to compare after we watch the Dow hits and see how it compares to tonight's game. The Dow hits of the week brought to you by Dow Chemical. Well, we go to the fourth quarter. 34 to 0 is the score. St. James with a commanding lead and 12 minutes left to cap this one off. They have the football just beyond midfield. Hand off up the middle. Doesn't get very far, all the way to the only to the 45-yard line, picks up maybe a yard and a half, brings up fourth down. Hadn't seen that much tonight. I believe it only punted one time. And they will punt this one away. Number 37 will come on to do the honors for St. James. That's Ron Roulet. Yeah, we, we talked about special teams being a big part of the football game, but if the punter's not out there a whole lot, you don't have to worry about tackling that guy that's catching the ball, which <laughs> is Babbin back there. He's pretty doggone good. Yep. Good snap. This one is away, and another good punt by Roulet. And they will fair catch it. Will Babbin at the 17-yard line. Next week, we have a 7-4A district matchup with Broadmoor and St. Michael. Broad that has often come down to uh, to be a very important game in that district. And it should be. Broadmoor's got two wins in that district, beating Terra last night. So uh, Broadmoor's sitting right there. And that, you know, not the overall record's not that great, but as far as the district goes and the district rate go race goes, they're right there in the mix with all of them. That's all that matters right now. A big matchup in 3-5A tonight is Woodlawn and Central. We have Central and Catholic High, our regular season finale. And that is a defense that just doesn't want to even give up a yard. Yeah, that's, that's Narcisse in the middle. And, and this defense, I'm, I'm so impressed with this defense. You know, we always talk about Coach Daly and the, 
the wing tee and the, and the things that they do off of the wing tee, but the defense, the defense is the strength of this football team. Well, I hope it's just a cramp because I believe that's number 24, Jared Byers, who is down. And it looks like it, well, we're not going to speculate, but um, he's got pretty much all the starters in still, Randy, on defense. You got to wonder getting these guys ready for that big matchup next week, you know. Don't want to see anybody get hurt, obviously, right. anytime, but right. I mean, especially late in the game like this. And then, you know, when something like this happened, that's going to remind Coach Daly, and I'm sure he knows, but this the, right now that thing's ringing his head. <laughs> it, 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 it's talking to him right now, man, you know, should they be in there, should they not be in there? And that's a tough call for some coaches because you want your team to keep the sure, momentum. Sure. But you also want to give all the young guys time to play, and you want to give Donaldsville a little success. You don't want to run the score up, which they haven't done. And, and you know, he's just running the football. He's not doing anything tricky. Uh, so, you know, they're doing the right things at this point. On the year, they're averaging giving up just seven points a game. If you take that out to the first team off, to first team defense, they're actually only allowing 2.4 points per ball game. That's unbelievable. That's um, pretty solid. 2.4 points a game are the starting defense. And, you know, they're giving up seven as a total, like you said. So that that's, means that he has had these younger guys playing an awful lot this season. And, you know, that means he's beaten them. Yep. They, they've beaten people, and then they've beaten them bad enough to get the reserve players in. You know what? It's time for the Wendy's Nugget of the Game, brought to you by Wendy's 99-cent chicken nuggets. This is what a, a Coach Atkins had to say earlier this week, and I like this quote a lot. Winning is sometimes tougher than losing in terms of everything uh, it, because winning with winning comes responsibility and coach you know this better than any of us that um, you know when you start winning people start expecting you to win they start watching you a little bit closer they expect you to act properly on the field and off the field and it's exciting it's fun but uh, you know sometimes when you're losing you're not scrutinized nearly as much no, as it, when you win it. And it, he would much rather be winning, and he is proud of the, of the things that you talk about with his guys. You know, they right. become better players on the football field, the team's up on a rise, but more importantly, they become better students in the school and better people in the community. Trusty Lindecker, what do you have? Well, thanks, Jimmy. November 15th through the 18th will be the state championship swim meets held in Sulphur. A couple of years ago, it was actually held at the UNO Natatorium, but because of Hurricane Katrina, they moved it to LSU. LSU has a home game this year, so they moved it to the new Sulphur Aquatic Club. Sulphur's no stranger to state championships. They are actually the venue where state softball is played. Some 2,000 swimmers will s compete for a state title. For more information, log on to www.lhsaa.org. Thanks, Tressie. The LHSAA report brought to you by the Bone and Joint Clinic. Have you gone? Have you guys gone to the LHSAA website? It's very informative. You can get all kinds of things. Kind of, sometimes we kind of focus on five-yard penalty, replay, second down, on football and, and you know basketball, but so much information about all the other sports, the championships. Uh, so they have done a great job with that website. Very informative. And the staff of the LHSAA, they've got a big job. Yeah, they have done a good job. I mean, all the coaches go on the website and they, you know, they they download the uh, sheets for all the players to play. I mean, all the, right. everything that you need as far as a coach and player, it's all there on the website. What did we do without the internet? Everything was much slower. And Champlain Babbitt doesn't go very far. That website again, www.lhsaa.org. LHSAA.org. Check it out. 10, 11 in the clock ticks. Champlain Babin right there talking with his head coach, Gary Atkins. Coach Atkins very involved in all aspects of the team, especially on the offensive side. Sending in number two, Claude Rainey, only a sophomore. 6'3", Claude Rainey. Overall, Coach Atkins has got a young football team. Yes, he does. Know, especially, he does. you know, up front, we talked about how it starts up front on both sides of the ball. He's got he's got some freshmen playing on both sides of the football, and his team is 6-1, and one, so he, he's got a big future here. Under center is Roy Sam. Oh, nice job. Good block. Throwing it up. And it is a jump ball. The, def the defensive back, Deron Salette, knocks the ball away. And that was... Uh, Champlain Babin having to play defender. I need to mention while we have a second also, another great, magnificent job by Avoyles Cafe. We have not gone by their fabulous establishment at 333 3rd Street. 
need to do that. They have all kinds of great things, a new dinner menu with uh, steaks and catfish, etouffee, you name it, they have it. Of course, they're also doing karaoke on Tuesday nights. Ron McDaniel has been practicing. We expect the... Uh, Looking forward to it. The dying cats to be out there uh, the next dying time. Cats. I've heard you singing in the building a few times. Yeah, roaming the halls of Cox Communication. Less than ideal, let me tell you. You can also catch that Wednesday nights on Cox 4. Kings of karaoke, and that will die at the 40-yard line. So St. James will have pretty good field position once again. But they always provide some great food for us every week. And we appreciate all the hard work that they do for us. But go by and see them. They're open for uh, lunch and dinner. Tuesday through Saturday, they have lunch from 11 to 2. Of course, you can go after work anytime. I also have a late night breakfast from midnight to 4 a.m. on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights. Go check them out. Nine fourteen left to go in this fourth quarter 34 to 0 is the score there's the handoff to some new offensive players and we will get to see some of these guys out there very quickly that was number 42 running the football Shane grows a 5'3 134 pound sophomore hey you got the same results though running a buck sweep again and got seven yards so you know once again they keep the ground on the ball keep that clock moving coach Atkins coaching to the very end as you would expect He's got to get his team some work in there as well. Under center is number 13, Antoine Landry, only a freshman. There's the handoff to the halfback on the left side. And he's just moving the pile, man. He's close to a first down. The ball comes loose, but the whistle blew about five minutes ago. Maybe a little short. I believe that was uh, Brad Phillips, the freshman, running the football. And a pretty good job. He's going to be about a yard shy. Brings up third and a, a yard and a half, maybe. How about maybe showing a picture of Coach Daly on the sideline? I was watching. How about Coach Daly loving the roller coaster thing? I find that pretty interesting. I called him two years ago <laughs> trying to get a, an interview set up, and he answers his cell phone. Say, hey, Coach, what you doing? He said, I'm getting ready to go down Space Mountain. Can I call you in a few minutes? <laughs> I'm like, what? I thought he was kidding. The 5'3 freshman, excuse me, the 5'3 sophomore, Shane Groves, getting the first down. But he is an adrenaline junkie. He says the best ride in the country, bar none, the Spider-Man ride at MGM. Hey, he should know. <laughs> hey, I'll back him up on that one. Really? Oh. I can honestly say I've only been to um, Disney World once. I was in 10th grade. It's been a while. We're going to have to get him. It's been a while. We need to take, get him to take us over there and show That's, us around. Yeah. I love them too. I'd, I'd love to make some of those really? trips with him. I love roller coasters. Oh, we're gonna, yeah. We're going to have to send him to Vegas and ride the Big Shot. Oh, I believe that's, yeah. that, is that yeah. one of them things hanging off the side of the building or something, I believe? That's the one at, uh, <laughs> that's the one at New York, New York? No, that's a... Uh, Real quick, Edward Hill on that carry. 5'6", 122, Junior. Oh, yeah, that's the old stratosphere. That's right. Oh, yeah? On the midway of the strip between uh, the old downtown... Never and, been to Vegas. And... Uh, New strip, as they like to call it. Vegas is beautiful. <laughs> I, I tell you beautiful. what. What else about a little something else interesting about Coach Daly? If I remember correctly, I'm almost positive Coach Daly might be a scratch golfer. Oh, really? Yeah, you're gonna yeah. have to talk to him about that, Ron. I believe, my attention. There. I believe he's a very good golfer. Well, Coach Atkins a pretty good golfer too. Yeah, I might have to get them both. Look over. at this little. Nice job for the uh, sophomore Groves picking up about three yards, but that was some trickery. Not trickery, just misdirection is what you expect from the uh, uh, from the wing team. Get these guys out to Greystone. Yeah, Greystone. It, we went out there the other day, enjoyed that very much. Let's see if they can handle that. Greystone. A little Get tight. Some guys little out tight. there. Yep. Tight. I've seen some tight courses, but that was uh, it's we like tight. To call it tight. And it's pretty course, beautiful course. Brand new. Great track of land and a beautiful place. In Livingston Parish, the flags will fly. The fumble will Looks occur, like but that will be blown dead, I believe, before the snap. I actually have offsides in uh, St. James. Dead ball, false start on the offense. Five-yard penalty, replay third down. It was a good try. Broadmoor, St. Michael next week. You don't want to miss that one. 
6 12 left to go here in this football game and both of these teams will be heading to the playoffs without question nice play fake right here throwing the football the first pass for the freshman to throw that is Antoine Landry it was almost intercepted goes off the hands of number 36 the defensive back that uh, Toriano Joshua there is a flag down I believe we're gonna have illegal motion on St. James so they may decline this one let's listen to Mr. James Kellis and they're backing him up it's against St. James we just haven't gotten the official call yet. Just under six minutes to play, as you can see on the RSC scoreboard. Motion on the offense. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. They do decline it. Brings up fourth down, and they're going to go for it. Nothing wrong with giving your uh, youngsters a chance to go for it on fourth down, see what they're made of, see what their metal happens to be. Oh, yeah, it's a great opportunity to get these young guys involved in this wonderful atmosphere. There's not too many high school football games you're going to play in this type of atmosphere. Right. And the, the, the younger you do it, the more you do it, the better you're going to be at it. Freshman throwing the football, and this one will be picked off at the 10-yard line. He's got a little bit of running room, and he's undercut at the 35-yard line. Let's try to pick up who made the interception. Never did see it. We'll check it on the instant replay. Pretty good setup for the freshman. Number 36, Toriano. Yeah, Toriano Joshua. One of the few returning starters on this team for see, defense. One, one thing you, as we've been alluding to all night is Coach Atkins and the support he's got here. Guys, it's 34 to nothing. These stands are still tired. Absolutely. People are still cheering his team on. Band's still playing. So. Uh, we've got the cheerleaders visiting each other down here right now. But uh, we'll take a look at the turnovers real quick with uh, pretty uneven there, six and two. Uh, St. James doing a pretty good job of taking care of the ball tonight. Champlain Babin's got a seam. He's at the 30-yard line, down to the 25-yard line. Two flags will fly. I believe you're probably going to see a face mask. That was number 17 chasing him down. Dontrell Frazier, a junior. 5'7", 126 pounds, and that'll pack on a little more yardage at the end of the run, but Champlain Babin scooting around the left side, and big gain from the 36-yard uh, line down to the 25. James Kellis, our referee, will make the call. Gee, the foul, face mask on the defense. Half the distance to the goal, first down. Big one. Get, get him back to that fourth down play that... Donaldsville intercepted the football. You know, last week we gave the youngsters a tip. We'll give them another tip. There you go. Fourth down and long. They throw a deep ball. There's no sense to intercept it. It's better to bat that football down. You get it first down from the line of scrimmage instead right. of intercepting the football and not getting as many yards. So whenever it's fourth and long, it's much better to bat the and ball I, down and get it at the original line of scrimmage. And I see it from the offensive side, too. You know, you're going to punt the ball, put them in the same position. So... You know, take that shot like we said earlier. Take that shot down there. Hope for the hope for the interference call. But uh, yeah, definitely better to bat that ball down. Man, it's got to be hard though as a defensive back when you see that ball in your mitt and you just want that INT more than anything in the world. Give yeah. me the paper, Daddy. Give me in the paper. Very, very Rocket tough. All, but you got to do. All kids want their name in the paper. All kids want the stats. But the good football team, the team that win, the teams that win state championships, the team. They do the little things. Right. That's part of doing the little Guys, things. Right. Kind of injured uh, Wildcat right now. Number, uh, I think we have uh, Casey North. No, North I don't Sims. think it's Casey. Um, we'll see who it is when they, uh, as they escort him off the field. We hope he's all right. But you're right. It is Casey North. Yeah. So I'm sorry. I didn't mean to no, question you there. I just didn't I expect him tell. to be in the I game. I really didn't expect yeah. him to be in there. I saw that big body get up off the ground and. Pretty much knew it was just a couple of those guys we could pick from, but uh, they helped him yeah. a little bit off. But now he seems to be going off much more on his Tumbling. own steam. Yeah, I, I guarantee you, Coach Dale is getting Dale is getting <laughs> a little nervous right now when you got Ronnie Lott Byers getting off, and then you right. got Narcisse getting off an injury late in the football game that you have well in hand. I'm sure he's getting a little nervous about guys getting injured. I don't. He's got pretty much his starters in there defensively. Byers is back into the game. He, they don't want them to get a score on him. 
34 to 0 is the score with 442, but they've got the ball at the 10-yard line. And it's going to be Roy Sam. He's got his shirt tail. That was a shirt tail tackle. He slid by somebody and they reached out and grabbed him by the shirt sleeve and prevented him from going any further. And that is just strength. He did have the reserve guys in when they broke the long right. run. He brought in, and it's tough as a coach. I mean, you know, you got your starters over there like, Coach, we only giving up two points a game. <laughs> we really want this shutout. So, I mean, I really don't blame him for that, um, you know, bringing these guys in. This is pride in what this defensive unit right. has done throughout right. this season as far as shutting people out and not letting people score many points. It's just this pride factor that they have, and he wants to continue to keep that pride factor throughout the season. Right. Their only loss coming to Destrahan, 10-6. to Destrahan, a 5A school, and they're undefeated this year. Running for his life is Roy Sam, and he will be dropped for a big loss at the 22-yard line, so they lose 12 yards on that one. I don't know how many sacks. It's been four or five. And it's almost like, I and mean, sometimes he's just slipping. It's going to take a big play to get in that end zone tonight, it looks like. They just so quick. And when they send wow. the linebackers, you got North Seas, and, they, and then they send in the Thomas in there. You send in them linebackers, and they're just quick down line, and they're pretty tough. Have you ever seen a cutting horse cutting cattle? Oh, yeah. That's what it looks like. They're just out there, and no yeah. matter where they go, they're right on them. Got a wealth of knowledge here, folks. I actually used to go watch that at the uh, John M. Parker Coliseum years ago. When play I was fake. It won't go far because it goes nowhere. Landry didn't bite at all, and Roy Sam is sacked for another loss. They turned the ball over on downs. Okay, do you think that defense came in and made a point? <laughs> yes, yeah. they did. Uh, yes, they did. Even without Casey in there, they still were able to do what they had been doing all night to him. They came in and made a serious point. Every play was a negative yards play. Alexander Thomas, 56, came in for Casey Narcisse, and uh, he did a good job to clog up the middle. Since the starters came back in, it was a negative 20 yards on that drive. Well, I'd say that was a pretty good stat. Boy, I, I, looking forward to our game at Memorial next week with Broadmoor and St. Michael, but I sure wouldn't mind being in the stands for the St. James John Curtis game. Yeah, I'm going to take Curtis. Still good. playing tough here, guys. Curtis good football team. Got a lot of guys going to be playing Division One football, but they don't have the speed that right. St. James has got. But what they do have, they have that power, and they're going to run right at St. James. And when you have that much power and that much size and that much strength, you don't need to run outside. You just, you know, you walk up to the line of scrimmage and say, look, you fast guys, I'm running right there, but you got to stop. Me. And that's what John Curtis is going to do to him. There's the St. James band excited about the way this thing has panned out. 225 remaining. In the, fall, in, the, in the ball game. There's the handoff on the dive to the fullback. Close to the 35 yard line, let's see. Good sportsmanship there, everybody helping each other up and it was number 34 on the carry, his first carry of the night. That's uh, Rommel Steeb, 5'8", 190 pound sophomore. A lot of young guys on this team. They only have 10 seniors to St. James and uh, Donaldsonville only has nine. Yeah, we got two young football teams and two big futures for both programs when you have that many young guys out there playing. It's, it, it's hard to believe that St. James only got 10, 10 seniors on this football team. Uh, you don't want to run out of bounds right there, and you definitely don't want to get the 15-yard penalty if you're Donaldsonville. That was uh, Edward Hill, the junior. That's a young mistake right there, running out of bounds. You need to cut that thing up, and I mean, if you got to, you just fall on the ground and let the clock run. Yeah, no reason for it there hit like that either out of bounds for Charles Dent. Both of these coaches said the one thing or one of the things that has helped them a great deal has been the addition of the seventh and eighth grade. First foul on the defense, 15 yards from the end of the run, first down. The addition three or four years ago of the seventh and eighth grade to both these schools. Now they can't, now they don't count really on numbers and things like that, but they're getting the same program, the same everything. It gives the coach, these coaches, an opportunity to get their younger kids started running these plays right. that they run at the high school level. By the time these guys get up to the ninth grade, I mean, they know exactly what plays they're going to run, and they know exactly how to run them. Yep. Although we haven't had a lot of them tonight, guys. Most of them have been some really quick attacks. We do have uh, the Greystone long drive of the game here. Uh, four plays, 65-yard drive by St. James. Uh, four plays. Four plays. That's our. I'm, I've been sitting here for a while trying to figure out 
which was going to make it, but uh, it beat the three play 56 yard <laughs> out. So four play 65 yard is our Greystone Country Club. Greystone Country Club is where we were talking early. Denham Springs, great facility open to the public. Uh, clubhouse opening in a couple of weeks. So uh, get out there and get a get a first hand look at uh, some great 18 holes of golf, good facility. Uh, great pro shop, food and, food and beverage, what have you, tournaments. How fine is that, that pro shop going to be? That thing's pretty nice. It's, it should be pretty close to being done, all right? Yeah, we're about two and a half weeks away, uh, 9,300 square feet under roof, uh, able to handle any kind of corporate gatherings out there. So keep Greystone in mind for those Christmas parties, company functions, and uh, a lot going on now with Bass Pro coming out there. Uh, you know, a little shot in the arm for the community, but uh, looking forward to it and looking forward to having you guys back out again as well. They got a fumble, and he's going to take it back. It's number 89, the freshman, to the 10-5, and we have a touchdown. After all the hard work of the defense, it was the defense of Donaldsonville that puts it in the end zone. That's a key turner, the 6-foot, 182-pound freshman, and they just took the ball away from the young quarterback. With 8.3 seconds left in the ball game, they score a defensive touchdown. Yeah, not much you can say there. I mean, it's good, good effort, and uh, I mean, I've got to look at the Donaldsonville coaching staff and say hats off to you. Let's watch them. They never gave up. Yeah, they never got the playoff. This nope. looked like St. James defense a little bit with the penetration, and then the scoop and score. And once he sees that green grass, he said, "I'm taking it to the house, and there isn't anybody gonna catch me." I he know. looks like a big fullback running the football guy. right That's there. Turner, saying. he's only a freshman, <laughs> gentlemen. Jeez. Six Big foot, up. 190 pounds. And I like it when he crosses the line, he turns around, hands the official the ball. He's yes. actually, he acts like he's been there before. And that's how it should be. Yep. Yeah, gentlemen. It's good to see those kind of acts. I know uh, that trickles down from your coach, Coach Atkins. We've been right. talking all night. A great gentleman, gentleman of the game. Well, this will be Roy Sam, the first opportunity to kick an extra point tonight. 34 to blocked. 34 to 6 will end this game up, we would imagine, with 8.3 seconds on the clock, and that was blocked. I didn't see who came in, but that was a, a nice block. <laughs> Let's take a look at what's happening Thursdays. <coughs> on Cox 4, you don't want to miss the primetime lineup. It begins at 6 o'clock with the best of Southern Outdoors on Journey South. Watch as the performing arts come alive on Artworks at 6, 6.30. Meet Louisiana's best artists on Delta Hands at 7, and learn how to whip up Louisiana's best delicacies on Cajun Carl's Kitchen at 7.30. The best local programming is only on cable. It is only on Cox 4. Well, gentlemen, it has been uh, an exciting football game from start to finish, but it has been all St. James tonight. They were certainly the better football team, and we wish uh, both of these schools all the best. They will be going into the playoffs. We may have an opportunity to see them again. Um, if things pan out the way we, we would like. Both of these teams will represent this dist district well in the playoffs. Uh, Coach Atkins will get some of these injured guys back in. Some key injured guys. Injured guys. Right. I, mean, he, I, I think you're right. He, he's missing quite a few guys that started the football season for him, and he's expecting quite a few of them to come back next week. So it will look like a little bit different football team come around playoff time. The biggest loss that they had, of course, is that fullback, number 11, John Jones, torn MCL. He's not going to be coming back, unfortunately. But they will get Robert Thomas, the outside linebacker, back after a strained MCL. And I would expect Dean Warner is going to play a lot more next week as well. Yeah, they'll probably move him back to quarterback and then move Roy Sam yeah. back to the tailback position where everybody's pretty comfortable and played the majority of the football at, and, and it looked like a different team. They play LaRanger ne La next week. And uh, and if, that, if they can win that one, it would definitely put them in position for to, to host a playoff game, which they have not done in 15 years. This kick, the onside kick, is going to be taken. Nice job right into the mitts, and a good job to cover the football is Terrence Green, the sophomore. Five point two seconds left to go here in this football game. Again next week, we head to Memorial Stadium for Broadmoor and St. Michael. And this has been a fun football game for us. I want to thank Donaldsonville for all their hospitality and St. James for all the fun that we had on Wednesday afternoon and Wednesday evening at the quarterback club. We love coming out here across the river to St. James and Donaldsonville. We are going to call it a night, and uh, I want to thank everybody on the crew. They did such magnificent work as they always do. We are going to be
joining Acadiana momentarily. And uh, they have an exciting football game over there. Bro Bridge and St. Martinville battling it out. Wow. That is going to be uh, one. And we will take that one down to the wire with Jeff Palermo and Patrick Broussard. I want to thank everybody once again for myself, Jimmy Frederick, Ron McDaniel, Randy Leindecker, Tressy Leindecker, and our entire crew. Have a great weekend, everybody. We'll see you next week on the Cox 4 Game of the Week. We head to Acadiana.